Hello Automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and this is the best smart home products of 2022. I have handpicked all of these products and while the video itself is massive, I've put time codes below so you can jump around. Plus, I wanted to make this more of a shared viewing experience, more so than just an unboxing. So in between the products or segments of products, I've spent some time and put a little story together for you, or I've given you further insight into a product or maybe even the company. I don't know about you, but it feels like the world of products and sales has gone a little crazy. It seems to me that companies have become so sophisticated and so powerful that they can literally print infinite money by sucking more of it out of the consumer. This is something I've felt for a long time. And so when I watch a new company show up on the smart home scene and start selling products at a reasonable price point, I get nothing but excited. And that brings me to third reality and their smart blinds. Let's grab it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure you guys asked me to get this and didn't even know it. Cause what you guys told me was, hey, you know what? We want to see more of the third reality stuff. I gotta tell you, the, you know, the delivery companies, they're not that good. Last time I had one of these videos, I showed you Oh, they had broken something else. It came from the US that I was so excited about. Here we are. I think this bend is okay. Cause it was where the smart blinds came off. Okay, we've got some buttons. So it looks like you can control on the device here. I gotta keep spinning this thing around. So for AA batteries, you have a little bit of branding at the bottom here. Ooh, this remote's making me feel bad about myself as a man. I'm admitting too much. You know, this is this is long, man. And again, we're taking some some double A's. Actually, I know they'll work with uh, smart things now. They actually just got integration. They should work with Amazon too. It's gonna go in my bathroom. It was specifically suited for that, and it's going to become part of the review when we talk about all of the third reality gear, as you guys had asked for. These smart blinds line up really close to what. IKEA is giving you for pricing and in terms of features. The big issue with the blinds is the sizing range for the width of the window that you can cover with these. The other big limitation is that you're going to get about six months of battery life out of those smart blinds before you gotta change it. Otherwise, I was incredibly impressed with the quality of material and understand, I'm not someone who works with blinds and materials like this all the time, but they feel like they're going to last for a very long time and they're built in a way that I think a little bit of dirt or a little bit of childlike fingers like mine will not ruin them immediately. The installation process was well laid out in the manual and it was really easy for even someone as horrible as I am at home renovations to complete in under half an hour. The automation options are what you would expect from a set of blinds, or at least what I expect. And I like that within smart things, I was able to set a preset position. So it's not just controlling by percentage, but you get one of these little extra preset positions that you can kind of send it back to at any time. As a content creator, you have to be a little careful with the companies you align yourself with and the companies that you work with on a regular basis, because a lot of your success is derived from the success of those companies to meet the needs of your audience. And let me be clear that at some level, I have to make money from the relationships that I have with these companies because the ads on YouTube here, they're never gonna pay all the bills, at least not the way I make content. So it's a tricky situation or a tricky relationship to build when you're trying to work with a company that's exciting and innovative and meeting the needs of your audience on a regular basis, and then still being able to extract some value for yourself which becomes even harder to do when you get to know the people you're working with and they turn out to not just 
be incredibly motivated and determined, but also genuinely good people who want to do right by you and want to do right by their customers. It actually becomes something I don't want to take money for. And so I have tried to lessen that with SwitchBot as we've gone through this year. But they are such good people that sometimes I get money for what feels like too good of a product for them to pay for the video to be on my channel. Now this might be one of the first ones out the door. And that's always a dangerous situation when you're someone like me, because you could spend a lot of time on devices that are brand new, like the SwitchBot Blind Tilt Controller. Now, I have a few of these inside of the box, and I've got some of these. So I ended up with three of these. I'm only gonna get one of them opened up today. There are certain blind installations that are going to work with these, but this is something that we showed on our interview with SwitchBot. And if you haven't watched that, they still have more interesting products to come. On first impressions, this is a lot smaller than I thought it was gonna be. They're saying there's a 2000 milliamp hour battery inside of this device. Honestly, uh, that, like it's, it's not even a hand length. So I'm quite surprised at what I'm holding in my hands here. That's what she said. There's a little charge port on the top, a little button on the bottom. Looks like there's a little light or LED indicator, and I think this is gonna pop off. I don't wanna break it just yet, but uh, yeah, it looks like if I push that up, that opens up. That's how you're gonna get it over your existing uh, blinds there. Here's what we get in the box. Here's the main blind and tilt shade unit. Here's the solar panel with its own attached cable. That's going to go in the top here. There's a little locking mechanism on it. Now I can lock that on there. This is called the open flex holder, I think. Open flex coupling. Here is the cord holder of some sort. We still have a type C power cable. Obviously that'd be for charging if you weren't going to use the solar panel. Maybe some of your installs won't have that. Uh, there is a pin to release here and then these are some adapters. It's saying uh, a number of different sizes. So uh, S right there, here's a medium one. Uh, it looks like an L and I bet you there's an XL. Plus there's some screws here and an alignment sticker. So from what SwitchBot is telling me in the instructions here, this is actually the last stage of the process, but it looks kind of cool. Now you're gonna basically find out the size of your, your curtain rod or your blind rod that's hanging down, and this is gonna twist it for you. So you're gonna use one of these adapters, you're gonna end up probably using this one, and I think these go on the inside of this, and then the whole mechanism is just basically gonna gonna turn it for you. So I can see a little gear inside of there, and we're gonna make that, you can see that little connection there. That's how it's gonna twist things. So, you know, we're back to like grade four science here, people. Uh, with gears, but it feels incredibly effective in terms of a turn ratio. I don't think it's going to use a lot of energy, and they are saying a lot of battery life on that one. Okay, I promise we're done with the window coverings after this next one. Frankly though, it's obvious it was the year of window coverings in the smart home space. Anyways, Acara is probably the company I see gaining the most next year in the smart home space, at least the most next to Apple. This is a hard company to ignore because their capabilities are nearly endless for you in their application, and they provide just about everything you guys ask me for. Plus, they have become more and more innovative, and the products have become more and more reliable. 
And again, you get to know these people from these companies, and I totally screwed up what was a completely ready to go on their end sponsorship on this next product. I got sick and then there were other problems, all of which I created. And yet this company has continued to be good to me and has helped me all year. So it's really great to be able to showcase the Akara curtains, which have some interesting features for you. This I have been waiting for for a very long time, and I'm not even sure when I'm going to be able to show it to you. But this is an incredibly exciting product from Akara. There's a couple of things in here. I don't the, how do we get into this? Oh, okay. What I have here is called the E1 track version of Akara's new curtain driver. And this one over here is the curtain driver in a rod version. And this is a fantastic piece of news for us, especially for those of us that maybe didn't have success with what I'll call a very similar product from SwitchBot on this. So let's get, I'm gonna open up the rod version. I expect these will be pretty similar. Oh, there's a lot of stuff coming out. Oh, Ooh, this is heavy. Guys, this is big, this is heavy. We've got a little bit of, you hear that? It's really rolling. There's a little button on here. And then these are obviously your hooks. Where you are gonna kind of hook and move it along here. Now I think, if I'm reading things right. So you've got the rollers up here. And then this is gonna hook on here and it's gonna go driving along. Now, I mean, the only thing I'll say is that is big. And although we wanna hear that in certain situations, guys, I don't know that everyone's gonna love that. Now, the manuals from Akara are always very comprehensive, so you do love that. I don't know what this is, but I'll write it on screen right now. This would be a charging cable and it is USB-C. So that's good news. And the charger is on the bottom here. There you go. Obviously that cable's not gonna be sitting there the whole time. Now let's see, there's just so many little accessories. Oh, little clips. Take me to your leader. I am a, these are alligator clips, man. Like, look at those, those claws. That'll kill someone. Okay, that's everything we got with these, but let's see what is in the track version. We're gonna see what we get with this one. I'm gonna assume a lot of the same components, but this box is much smaller than the last one. So again, same exact thing. This is exactly the same. One of the exciting things about this product from Akara is, I mean, their hubs work with Apple HomeKit, so I'm expecting this to be compatible there. So that comes out, but this other side doesn't come out, so I guess if you only needed one, or if you want to turn it into some kind of transformer. Not touching. Touching. My first smartphone was called the Samsung Instinct. This was before iPhones took off and I don't think Android was even a thing when I bought it. But honestly, I left that experience hating Samsung as a company. And I know that many people have struggled with certain products from Samsung as they don't always hit the mark. But there is something really special about Samsung's screens. And this goes from their monitors and their televisions to just about every smartphone and tablet that I have seen from them. But the screens aren't just screens anymore. And if I was to tell you that a monitor had a matter controller on it, in the future would be upgradable to a Zigbee and a Thread hub. Plus it was a streaming device, a gaming platform, was 4K and let you access your entire smart home with a remote. 
And then on top of that, it was a smart speaker with two voice assistants on it. You'd probably ask me where to get it. I am so excited for this one. I'll just, just do that for now. Okay. Oh, now the box is break. Get, get out of here. Oh, there was nothing left in that. This is the Samsung Smart Monitor M7, and I picked it up on Prime Day. It's a 4K smart monitor that can help you uh, both connect directly to streaming services, plus it's SmartThings compatible, and it's actually a SmartThings dashboard or control interface. And it really starts to bridge that gap between monitors and computers in general. So this is, I would say, the second highest level of these smart monitors. We have the M7, uh, M8, there's an M5 and an M3. So the screen is 32 and a half inches, like I mentioned, 4K. Clearly just the stand here, or the, the neck for the stand. I think that's gonna go on the back and then we're coming down here. Ooh, am I getting any other stand at all? That's not gonna sit on the ground. So I gotta mount this one? I don't know what's going on. Oh! <laughs> Here's the stand. <laughs> Pretty simple. I think we're just gonna be connecting in this bad boy. Probably wasn't supposed to do that yet. There's a little tightening screw here to get that all uh, more rigid. I get an HDMI cable, which is gonna help me obviously connect that up to my computer or another source. I get a power cable, no big transformer, so I like that. A USB-C cable, and here's the remote. It is incredibly thin. Because this is a smart monitor, it's not just intended as a PC monitor, it has you know a Netflix button, Samsung TV Plus, Disney Plus, Prime Video. I notice a lot of pluses on there. There's a couple of little tabs right here on the stand, and then you just take this. This is a really easy mounting mechanism. Uh, famous last words, but there you go. And now there's a couple of screws here. I'm mounted up. I've got a deal with the bottom uh, mounting screw as well. Giving it the old screw. Do doop 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 doop. Bottom one. Oh. Yeah. So just touring around the panel, there's a bunch of different control buttons here at the bottom. Looks a lot like this remote, if I'm being honest. It's kind of forward tilted. There's about a minus two degree tilt, it says in the manual. And then you can tilt back about 22 degrees. Now, when we flip around this way, we have the three USB ports. Then there is an HDMI ARC port, an HDMI port, a second one. And then right here is a USB-C port, which they gave us a USB-C cable for. Now this powers 65 watts. So that's actually a really great option for those of you who want to power some other device and it's using USB-C. And of course you have standard mounting uh, capabilities right here if you wanted to mount this one. Ah, the sounds of monitors. Oh look, it's ASMR again. Two simple options. How would you like to get started?
language. When I first started Automate Your Life, my goal was just to help people set up their smart homes. And over time, I've expanded that idea with helping people to sort through the things that cost them time and money within a smart home. That means I'm not selling a lifestyle or products directly in a lot of my videos. I'm more selling a solution to living a lifestyle. And what that has meant is that certain companies will approach us to work together and certain companies will not just based on the way the channel feels versus some others. And I'm not poking at other creators here when I say this, but you should understand that how a content creator positions themselves will change those opportunities that they are presented with and how they will come forward with products from those companies. So until 2022, I didn't actually talk to anyone at Lutron ever. It took our channel getting to a certain size and it took our channel getting to a certain level of popularity, which I was very excited to get to. Now I'm not saying that I was sponsored by Lutron because I think that takes another level with them specifically, but it did mean that I got some products sent to me and although I've had Lutron products and I've worked with them in the past, it's a whole different ball game to put them in your home. And these two products solve lighting in a way that I have yet to see elsewhere. This is a pretty exciting product. It's pretty much brand new. This is the new Diva Smart Dimmer Switch. And yes, it works with your Lutron Cassetta system. Let me break into this real quick. Let's just get stuff out of here. In the box, we got the switch itself. We've got some mounting hardware. We've got some electrical uh, ties there. We've got a short little guide and then some instructions for how to get a better guide. And this little green piece of paper that I'm sure says something on it. Doesn't speak English, so I don't know what it's saying. We also get this, which is a jumper wire in case you're using basically a second switch, as far as I can tell here in the notes. I think one of the things that always got me with Cassetta was that the remotes were too complex and this is intended to look just like any dimmer switch in your home, but obviously it's working with the Cassetta system. Now I asked a lot of questions uh, with the engineers, with the people from Lutron and what I found out is that this is really smartly designed. Number one, if you have a three-way switch, you can just put this one in one of those and then the other switch will actually still work. Number two, the dimmer here. So you can set it and there will be a little LED that lights up to the dimming level that you've put on there. Of course, that's gonna be controllable in the app whether or not it's showing up. But if you control it to a higher percentage, let's say from the app or from voice or some other source, the bar will go above this physical dimmer switch and then you can still move it and make that adjustment physically. So it's merging the, the smart with the physical world in a really great way. The other thing that's really great, number three on this is, of course, it's gonna work with those Pico remotes. You can place those anywhere and still use these kinds of switches. So they've pretty much given me a number of situations and actually this should fit just about anywhere in your home. Number one, single pole or three way uh, situation. So switches you have in your home controlled from one or two switches. If you have multiple locations, so let's say you've got a set of lights that are controlled controlled from like three different uh, switch locations, you can still use this. And what Lutron has been saying is they'll release a Diva accessory switch that will help you to take care of those situations. That'll be a cheaper version of this basically, it'll be a smarter hardware uh, than your existing switch, but not super smart. So you won't be paying the same price every time. I'm gonna get this installed in my home and show you how it works. Lutron also released the Claro, which is a $60 smart switch, just $10 less than the Diva. But in terms of an actual installation, there were some tricky things here. 
It's not that the physical installation was difficult, and actually I just had to look up some instructions on Lutron's website to make sure I had everything right, but with the fact that the four wires are tied directly into your Diva smart switch, you end up with a lot of extra wires and components inside of the light switch's electrical box. There were four wire nuts added to my first box and actually I couldn't fit it in, at least not without taking out some of the other wires or cutting them short to where I might not be comfortable in the future. So I couldn't fit it in one of the lighting boxes that I wanted to use it in, but I think for most two gang and three gang switches you're going to have more than enough room. In the end, I did find a single gang switch that did work and I could fit everything in. And actually, the whole installation process was about 10 to 15 minutes and I didn't even have to use the ground, the green or the blue wires. Once installed, I had to make sure that it was a dimmable bulb and not a smart dimmable bulb. And that's something to keep in mind with any Lutron switches. Let's get this bad boy opened up. This one is from Lutron, and I actually got it for a really specific reason. I've got a video coming up that's really all about smart lighting in apartments and things like that. So, look at that! I got me a nice little card here from Leah. And what we have is called the Lamp Dimmer Kit with the bridge. Now, what's so interesting about this is you'll plug your lamp into it and then you can dim it. Now let me get out the big component here. We get within this pack, it looks like the smart dimmer or the smart bridge, sorry. Now, this is the Lutron bridge, okay? And what's really great about this, number one, it's a wired in thing. And then thereafter to communicate with their other devices, they're not using your Wi-Fi. This also has a HomeKit code on it, which is really important for a lot of you. So that means, home kit. Now this is your dimmer and it's a dimmer switch. It's plug-in and so your lamps are going to go in the side here. It looks like we've got two plug-ins in the sides and then we've got dimmer switches that we can control on here. We've got an on and an off button and I got two of these in the pack. Plus within this package and I don't even know the, the pricing on this but I mean, this is pretty deluxe. You've got two Pico remotes that would allow you to, you could pair it with one of them or either of them, uh, and then you can place those remotes somewhere else in your home and control it. I really love this idea, especially for smart apartments to control lamps. Sometimes it's just about how useful something is to your home. And I don't think that enough smart home products solve the biggest problems we have in our homes. Everyone I know is trying to save money through energy or water, or they want to improve their home security, whether it's at the front door or on the outside of the home, or whether it's leak or fire prevention inside of the home. And that's what I love about companies like Zoos, who really are just building smart home products that solve some of those major issues. Now I'm gonna show you two products, and the first product is so good at being a smart energy monitor because each of its outlets can be controlled individually and can monitor your energy usage on that plug. So it's the best power bar I own, and I wish I had about 10. So if you're working at Zoos and you're watching, that's my Christmas wish. Right off the bat with this S2 power strip from Zoos, I'm pretty excited about a few things. Now it's max 15 amps, and what I'm seeing that has me just a little bit excited, other than the Z-Wave communication to your hub and some little manuals and some other stuff, but what I am excited about is the green box. So I finally got to it here, but I'm excited that each of these are individually controllable. And they are controllable on the device as well, so those buttons will work, plus you're going to have app control. Now having compared so many of these power bars, there's a couple of things I'm really excited for off the bat. This is a 
you know, it's gonna kind of come out to the side. So this isn't gonna cover both of your outlets on your wall. We've got a full on and off. Plus we've got actually a reset for what is, it, it must be a surge protected bar. We also have, there's five different outlets plus a max of 2.1 amps coming out of our two USB ports. Plus they have mounting hardware on the back, which is always a good option. Now, here are some really wild things about this. The USB ports say no Z-Wave control on them, but there's some really interesting things going on with these buttons. Now, it says one click for on off. Okay, that seems fine. Three clicks to add or remove. Six clicks to change the LED mode and 10 clicks to reset the kilowatt hours record. Now that means we got power monitoring on this whole thing. Now I can go click, click, click and hold for a factory reset. And I can click, 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 click and hold to disable manual control. So you can even get those buttons to no longer work. There's quite a bit going on in here. Uh, and we haven't even got into the app and the, the different control things that we're going to get out of this power bar. Now, the one thing I'm not super excited about, Zeus, I got to tell you, a little bit of extra distance here between the outlets. That would have been nice. It's going to depend on the, you know, the things you're plugging in here, but that could actually severely limit what you can plug in this. That's the only thing I'll say for this. Sometimes the layout, it's better if it's just a little bit longer, but overall, this is a wonderful design. It's time for the Titan. Now this, they've had this for a little while, but the Titan is a water valve actuator. And actually the box says that it's coming with its own leak probe here. Smart start, we've got a QR code. And then it, it's basically uh, pairing again properly. Uh, ah. So this can be used with any half inch to one and a quarter inch uh, ball valves, okay? So you can see the little diagram there. No, yes, no, yes, no, yes. Please read. Always close the ball valve before installing your actuator. Good manual, which you're gonna need for something like this. This is not just your average install. Here's our leak detection cable. So it's got its own, but obviously with pairing to most hubs, you're gonna have a lot of leak detectors, uh, really different sort of leak detector there. I'll say that much. Power adapter, and I like that we've got kind of the twist on uh, method here of connecting. That's gonna keep things water sealed at the very least. We've got the adapter right there. O-ring? I, I don't know what that is. Some, some kind of gasket or O-ring. I don't think it's a gasket. We no longer need this. Now, I, you know, seeing this thing in person is a whole other ball game. Like I've seen it online, but whoa. Okay, so the way this is gonna go, and I'm gonna show you as I do it on mine, this is a Z-Wave button. It's an inclusion or an exclusion button on the top of this actuator. What you're gonna do is, uh, there, there's a spacer here if you need it. That's what that is, it wasn't a gasket. You might need that here, actually, on the bottom. Then we're gonna put these clamps uh, around our pipe and you're going to have already closed your water off. Then this is gonna basically have the handle sitting in here and it will turn the valve for you, right? There's gonna be a calibration process, so you'll have to do that. But otherwise, this is really, really, probably the easiest installation uh, I have seen of a water valve actuator and with it being Z-Wave, Z-Wave Plus and from Zoos, everything feels really high quality here. The aftermath story of the Zoos Titan is that it was a little scary to calibrate the device and there was a moment I thought it was gonna break my valve, but that was me just being a little bit nervous and it was properly doing its calibration. 
Otherwise, this is a top-notch product that was easy to install, configure, and use. Plus, with it being Z-Wave, it'll actually work in my mechanical room. You'll have to think about a battery backup for its power supply, but other than that, it's pretty close to perfect. There aren't a lot of people that cover Yolink here on YouTube, and really, in general. So, I think it was middle of the year that I said to the guys, hey, you gotta send me everything new you've released. And because they are such a small company, they don't really keep up with working with creators. So that's honestly why you don't see a lot of them on platforms like YouTube. But they have released a few devices that you'll see in today's video. And they are completely unique. And when I look at this speaker hub, it is everything that you guys asked for from all of the smart speakers you've bought in the last three years. Here's the speaker hub. Now, this is not a smart speaker, but it's intended to output audible messages to you whenever there's an alarm condition or something going on when you're using the Yolink system. And all of these products, yeah, they require the Yolink hub. And the biggest use case for smart speakers, or the thing that I get asked a lot about is, can I get it to announce something? And that's the whole point of this speaker hub from Yolink. So it will output messages as you configure it to do. You can get a number of these, place them around your home and they become that alarm system for you. Way to go. Way to go. One of the biggest things that I did this year was to work on what's called the energy challenge. and. That was an effort in partnership with If This Then That, and what happened was we ended up working on a couple of campaigns for the Energy Challenge. I actually ran those campaigns from the side of YouTube, and that meant that I gathered the creators together, and it even meant in some cases when we were working with companies that I took in the money, and then I paid it out to the creators that had made videos. And that's a total shift in what I've been doing and it's been good to see how other creators work and it's taught me a lot. But beyond that, the energy challenge is something that I believe in. Whether you believe in global warming, climate change, or don't, there is one irrefutable fact I can share with you. Anytime we're doing something, we are expending energy. And as of today, that energy costs money. And if we pretend that even part of global warming or climate change is true, then the creation of energy and the use of that energy always generates heat. There is no escaping that. So regardless of whether you believe in those terms or you're just living in a household that needs to save a little bit of money, energy is one of the biggest ways. And that's because it's one of the biggest expenses in a number of ways in all of our lives. So when we can save a little, we are doing a lot of good. And I love that. Okay. I have two AC units, and I couldn't get these in the studio quite right. Now these are both from Medea again, and they are smart air conditioning units. Now, the one is a window AC unit, which I can't really use, but this one, I'm gonna replace my existing uh, air conditioning unit as part of the energy challenge. In terms of BTU ratings, this one actually has pretty similar ratings to my existing unit, so we're gonna be able to compare directly, I think, on both of these units. Obviously, these are gonna help brace the, the window hose that's kinda heading out your window. Let's see if I can get this one out. I think that one might have to sit. <laughs> okay. We've also got some foam pads here. Foam pads with a little sticker. Ooh, that was a good throw. Throw that. Yeah, I'm throwing stuff in my living room now. Uh, and here's the other half. This is pretty heavy duty. So, you know, one of the things with my existing unit that isn't so great, uh, this is so flimsy. This is the part that kind of goes on your window. Sometimes I'm feeling like I could bend it or break it. And I think we all get that impression. This is feeling pretty sturdy. So this is 
This is where your hose is gonna kinda come up to, and then it's gonna be blowing the hot air out of there. Just gonna pull off some of the teep here. And that looks like it was chomped a little bit. So, I, I don't know. But I got a couple of foam pads here. Those feel like a, almost a soft pleather. Let's get in to the main unit. They really do well with the power adapters. They have obviously a reset and a test in case you're popping uh, the GC, GFCI in this, which that's really important to have on a unit that could be using this much power. All right, I found my manual. Oh, I got some foam pads, but I think the whole thing is gonna come out at once. Some more foam pads, the one ring to rule them all. Let's just, let's just do it. This is, this is why you go to the gym. Oh, uh, okay, now, funny story. I went full man mode on this and tried to lift it out of the box. Instead, remember that companies are smarter than you. <laughs> there we go. Oh, it's rolling. Is that rolling? It's got wheels. You gotta love that. You do get a full user manual. They really give you a lot of details in here about all your controls, plus what you can and can't do from, from the unit or with the unit. And they even show you how to do some of the installation, including with the application. Now you do get a drain pipe with this in case you uh, start to pull some of the humidity out of the air. Uh, you get a registration card and a really great remote. This is the same remote as the other AC unit, the window AC unit. Here's a little accessory. I'm not even sure what that is right now. And of course we get a couple of batteries for this. We've got uh, these two sticker pads and then this is a sticker as well. So this foam is gonna line inside of your window. You've got a second one right here. These are all our hose attachment components. So this is how we're gonna attach the bigger unit. Both of these work with Google, they work with Amazon, and they also work with If This Then That. Here's the hose. So this is gonna be really easy to pull out and then you can kind of pull up. You can see that that is gonna bend in to your window. And I love the little latching mechanism right here. In terms of controls, you know, I really like this. This is a simple turning mechanism. I'm just doing that with my hand. Uh, this allows you to redirect and you can see quite a bit of airflow is possible out of this unit. Now the controls physically on the device, you've got all these different buttons. There's your power button. Uh, this is a nighttime mode. This is changing your fan in terms of a number of different modes. Plus you've got up and down buttons and there's gonna be a little LED panel right here that's gonna tell you the temperature. Uh, you've got the ability to schedule and switch between modes. You could turn on and off that scheduling. And this is how we're gonna connect to the app. If this then that, Google Home and Amazon. Installation of the window coverings was quick and easy. I used all of the window coverings included and held them together with little tabs that were included as well. Additionally, I placed the foam pads you saw earlier outside of the panels, which helps insulate and therefore keeps heat out. Then you just take the connectors to your hose and you connect them into the unit itself. Or actually, in my case, I put them directly on the window covering then you stretch your hose up to the window and make the connection using the little clips on the connectors to securely fasten everything. Then you have to plug in the unit and everything's good to go. From there, setup in the Medea app is simple and requires you to just hold the Wi-Fi button on the unit for three seconds in order to initialize connection. Once connected in the application, the Duo has all of the controls in the app that are on the unit. There are some versions of this that have heater functions in them. So when you go to purchase this unit, you can look at that as an option to use it both in the winter and the summer. You can make the unit incredibly quiet and you can control all of the louvers, the temperature, the LEDs, the sounds, and of course you can set schedules and other basic automations. 
This is again a unit that you can connect to if this and that, Amazon or Google Home, but for this, I didn't feel the need to connect it at all with its great remote and the control in the app being so thorough. Plus, once you turn on the unit at all, it temperature controls itself, so it actually shuts off when it has succeeded at reaching the temperature you've set. Which brings me to the results of the energy challenge. My existing AC unit doesn't have the ability to measure the temperature in the room, which means it runs continuously at about 850 watts on its maximum cooling setting. In my room, that provided about 2.1 degrees Celsius of cooling per hour. The Medea unit provided an average of 3.6 degrees Celsius of cooling per hour using 1200 watts on its maximum cooling setting. So it used more energy, but it cooled the room at almost double the pace. And once it got to the desired temperature, it actually dropped to using about 300 watts per hour to keep the room at the temperature I wanted. So not only did I gain complete control of the room in terms of temperature, but even on full, I gained efficiency. Here's why. It took 333 watts of energy to cool the room by one degrees with Medea, while it took 404 watts of energy to cool the room by one degrees with my existing LG AC unit. So it's more efficient, it gives me better control, smart features, and honestly, it's just a much cooler unit. It gets me to a cooler spot in my home quicker. So I have to say that I really did enjoy this device from Medea and it's been highly reliable in terms of its Wi-Fi connection and its connectivity. There is nothing like a smart lighting product and I even modeled the logo for our channel after a smart light bulb, at least initially. And then someone taught me that my face was part of the brand, which, actually come to think of it is a scary thought. But what has impressed me with the smart lighting this year is that not everything is just a Wi-Fi light bulb or a Wi-Fi light strip anymore. And we're getting some really beautiful and functional lighting products that can actually improve our homes. Never before have I had smart lighting products that I am so proud to display as this set of products that I'm now using in my home and have become permanent fixtures. This is a strange looking package. Let's get into it. Ooh, neat looking boxes. LED strip. There's some extra stuff in here. So this is the Govi LED strip M1. Now, honestly, I know nothing about these. I haven't heard anything about these ones, but I've got some extra accessories that were sent with these. So let's just get this opened up and see what we got. I mean, I've had many versions of Govi's light strips and honestly, the colors are so fantastic. They're telling me to lift, but there's nothing in there. I understand all of this stuff that was in the bottom of the package was supposed to be in the bottom of this. So all we have is a circle. All right, all of this makes a lot more sense. The packaging did not make it guys. So what you get in the box here, a little card that tells you how you can install it. It's a quick start guide as well. A full user manual and then a little uh, join the, the Govi Home application because that's what you use to control all of Govi's stuff. Then we have the assembly for the controller. Now, this is a fairly large uh, transformer for the whole thing. They're not giving you some kind of rinky-dink deal here. That's gonna go into the controller, which uh, it's, it's a little bit upgraded, a little bit updated from the last time I saw this from Govi. Uh, they have still the same three buttons. This, this one should be the music sync. That's usually what it is. And on here is normally a microphone 
There's the port for that microphone, which allows you to run the whole strip on a music sync sort of feature. And then, you know what, this connector is definitely a little bit nicer than your standard one that you get with a lot of the light strips. I like to see just a little bit of better coverage for the pins and hopefully a better connection from the other side. And then you get this cable. So this, like I said, this is quite the adapter, quite the contraption to get this all plugged in. But that's because we're getting a pretty serious set of light strips. Now we're getting a couple of alcohol uh, pads or wipes there and a ton of different mounting hardware to make sure you can get this strip mounted right. Then there's a 3M sticker. I'm sure that's for this or, well, actually you already got a 3M sticker on this controller. So yeah, I think it's for that. Now the reel itself, very neat looking. You know, it's all it's branded to Govi. This is a very heavy reel. Like I didn't expect it to be like that, but let's pull out the strip and see what we got. Uh-oh, did I do that wrong? <laughs> the strip itself is covered entirely with tape. So you're gonna have that, you're gonna be able to go along, get this uh, onto the surface that you want it. It's a little thick, but that's kind of to be expected. There's nothing, like it's not restrictively thick, so you're gonna be able to bend this quite well. But when you're turning corners, that'll still be a little bit tough to deal with. Now there's the connector pin. So when we're going into this, it does matter which direction you go. There you go. Let's pull this baby out. Ooh, that's, that's just fun. So I think that would, this reel is gonna make it uh, really easy to install. Like I'm pulling quite hard uh, with my, this is my right arm. I'm pulling quite hard. So you can actually get that mounted pretty well using this reel. It's not a lot of reels you can do that when you buy uh, LED strips. Ooh, this, is a, this is a light strip and a half. I'm tired. There we go. I made it to the end. These are extendable. That was one of the big questions I had. There's the other side of the LED strip. You can see it's got that same connector that we plugged into the start of this. With Govi's LED strips, you know, you're getting a lot of different effects with these things. So not only can you extend these and put them quite far across your home, you're going to be able to apply some of the best effects out there. They're controllable by Google and Amazon voice assistants, but uh, the connection with Amazon is really fantastic. You get a lot of those custom scenes, you can activate those, and there's usually even a DIY mode where you can create your own effects, which you know, my little guy loves doing with all of Govi's products. First, I set up the Govi M1 light strips on the bench and I tested out the fact that you can connect multiple of these strips together and then simply refresh the length in the app in order to get longer runs done. I tested out some of the new features and new effects and there are too many to talk about. Govi has continued to build out their app in terms of features and in terms of effects. Installation wasn't difficult either and I even messed up once and had to pull the entire strip off, but because the sticky tape is so sticky, I was able to reattach everything and the only problem I really ran into was turning corners, which is fairly difficult. Govi gives you clear instructions in the manual for how to do this, but you should know that it's hard to turn the corners and you really do have to have this loop. I probably didn't need to use the clips, but I did just for extra protection and I did cut the strip towards the end to make it fit perfectly, which you can do at these little junctures. If you wanted to, you could solder between those two ends in order to turn a corner or to extend the strips even further. In the end, it's hard to say anything except these are remarkably vibrant and with the amount of features that are now packed into them it's hard to recommend anything else. The only reason Govi currently might not be used instead of anything else is because their compatibility is fairly limited with just Amazon and Google Home options. So you can see always with Govi it's always just an incredible viewing experience and this is going to work with all of their other products to make your whole home 
look pretty fantastic. This is the big boy today. This is from Jasco. And, you know, Jasco, we've always thought of as a company, they, they always had the GE and Brighton lineup. And that's what I thought of Jasco. And that lineup, for the most part, I think, was Z Wave. It's the weirdest paper packaging I've ever seen. Oh, wow. Just gonna grab these things out and set them on the desk. Oh, that one's heavy. This is basically a patio lighting set and it is really heavy. Oh, oh. <laughs> whoa. You, you know, I still do that. When I get some of these products, I still do the, whoa. There is a giant uh, mountable power here. So that should just be on and off for the power. You can mount that near, um, near your outlet when you plug it in. And you know what I really like about this? This is, this is computer engineer, electrical engineer, Brian talking. Uh, that mountable device here, this is a soft, strong and thick rubber. So no matter how hot this gets, it's not gonna burn down your house. Each of these bulbs, Look at that. I mean, I'll have to get a better shot than this for sure, but that looks unbelievable. There's like little bubbles in the, in there. And this is, each bulb has its own little bubble. So this is, yeah, this is probably the most interesting product. There's also little mounting spots all along here. I found that this little button over on the side that says my lights was so powerful. When I tapped into this, I found a map of the cafe lights that I could turn off individual lights, which I used right away because I didn't love the lights being on that were up against the side of my home. Then I could pick one, two, or three colors that I wanted to display. And as soon as I did that and hit save, I could then pick the colors I wanted to use then it would automatically alternate those colors and I could dim or brighten the whole set. These are an incredible centerpiece to have on your deck and the fantastic construction is something that I cannot stress enough. I absolutely hate getting products that are smart but are made poorly and won't last. This is a product that I think will easily last 10 years in almost every situation and if you treat them well, they could probably go 25 years. And they are essentially infinitely expandable as they have that plug at the end. So if your home grows or your patio even grows, then you're going to be able to purchase new ones and expand over time. Now I have no idea what this one is. This could be really, really different. Madeline handles a lot of this for me, but I actually was asked by Yeelight if I wanted one of these, I think it was around Christmas. Things didn't happen the right way and I never got it. But this is a smart light bar, okay? It's supposed to go toward your LED screen. It kind of clips on the top of one of your monitors and it's a smart one. Now, as I understand it, this one works with like Razer Chroma. Ooh. Oh, a catapult. That's, that's not a catapult. As, asthma, ASMR. Do you say asthma or ASMR? Oh yeah. The whole point of this thing is that it reduces kind of screen fatigue, eye fatigue. And this looks like, like those are depressing in. So that's going to be where your, where your power is coming. And a tiny power cable, USB-C. Oh, I bet it's into this and it is magnetic. So really, really nice design. Nice looking light bar. It's staying on. I mean, I'm two triple A's for the remote and the remote's a twist and it does click down. This is going to be good. I want to try it out with Razer Chroma. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see more about that one. I'm betting a lot of you will. You guys want to see how strong I am? I'm super strong. Ready? Yeah. Well, that wasn't as strong as I wanted to be. It was actually a really terrible showing of strength. I can feel this is a multi-package sort of deal. Ooh, there was something extra in there. So I've got 
Three products from Miros, two of them are complete lighting things, and then this has a little light on it as well. Let's start with the Smart Wi-Fi Essential Oil Diffuser. This is model 150, MOD 150. Now, I had one of these, I purchased one, and it's worked really well in my home. We've got an adapter in the box. It's specially made for this device. And I can tell, you know, this has had a bit of an upgrade from the one that I purchased in terms of its physical design. This is a much smaller physical design or physical footprint. Uh, I instantly like that actually, because the other one I found a little overwhelming in my space. Now, you get a big old manual like this is, this is nice and big. Okay, and then we've got the seven things you need to know about HomeKit because yes, it does connect to Apple HomeKit. Inside of the device itself, now this is, you know, it looks wooden, it's plastic. There's a little insert here. And then inside here, they give you a cup. You always get a nice little cup there. It's a measuring cup. So you can make sure that you're diffusing correctly. Inside here, nothing different than you're gonna see with most of the basic diffusers out there. You get this little gap in here that's basically diffusing or causing the diffusion of your water out the top in a steam form. Now I can see the little light strip. So right around the base here, there's a little light strip, you can control that. In terms of the button right here, there's a light button right here, and there's a mist button. So you can turn those on independently on this. And then of course, in the app with Google, with uh, Amazon, Apple, and Samsung, you've got lots of control options. And that's one of the reasons I do like Miros. Now, one of the things that I thought was pretty smart in the design, when you take this adapter, and you plug it in here, it's still gonna basically sit flush. So it's, I mean, my, ta my table's moving, the Miros device isn't. There's a little bit of play in this, but not in that cable. Keeping the, the buttons behind and then just letting that show and do its thing. This one, I'm gonna push the, let's see, the light button first. You can control this light. You can actually make it static if you'd like. You can brighten and uh, dim it a little bit, but let's turn on the mist so my eyes can water from the peppermint. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Oh, <laughs> too much. This is very soft. It's kind of nondescript. It's not big like the last one, so, I, I do like this model a little better. I like this smaller design here. I don't have a ton of time in my life between being a single parent, running a YouTube channel like Automate Your Life, and I actually help out a number of other creators with their channels. My life is honestly pretty full, but when I finally sit down and watch a show or a movie, I find my mind wandering around my home to find new ways to control my smart home. Which usually means I miss the whole point of whatever I'm watching and have to rewatch it another time. But I will often have these aha moments when I just let my mind wander a bit. And it always inevitably turns to what I think is one of the most useful ways we can all control these products in our home. For our lighting, our control used to be a light switch on a wall, and that meant you had to get up and hit it. But nowadays, not only can we control our lighting anywhere we would like, but we can really customize how we are controlling that lighting with a button or a switch or a dial or something even more interesting. Plus, we can control our appliances, our home's heating, our cooling system, or really anything we can imagine with these. This one, I bought. So, let's get into it, because it's a pretty big deal. That's what she said. Ooh. What a weird package. That's what she said. This is the Philips Hue tap dial switch. You can barely tell what's going on on the box. I guess <laughs> Signify doesn't really care about retail. Oh, ripping my box already. Now, this should allow you only to control your Philips Hue lighting. So if you don't have Philips Hue, don't get upset at me right now. We'll try to find a way around it. Well, now I will say, 
That looks pretty nice. There is. Not a lot in this box. So you get a couple of manuals. I mean, uh, this one I think is your wireless guidelines. Here's a tiny user manual. You get the wall plate with on the back, there are some 3M strips. So this would be something you could just stick on and then you get the hue dial switch itself. Now it is a magnetic and there's a little notch in both of these that you can get that dial on to correctly. So they're just making sure that you have it right. Obviously you could take this with you because it's Zigbee, it's wireless, and there's just a little battery in it. Now you have four different buttons for scenes on the device and you have the dial. It's a 2032 in there. It's quite a deep compartment for that battery. So there is a setup button Inside, really hard to see that one. And otherwise, this device is done other than your physical installation, which you could do a ton of ways. <laughs> That's not magnetic, uh, but you've got a magnetic wall plate to go. So I went through the manual for the Hue dial switch and it's actually very different than I thought. This could be used without a Hue bridge at all. You can just pair it directly to a light. So this actually removes the requirement at some level for that, as long as you're good controlling it from here. Now you can uh, pair it obviously directly to the hub. You got a long hold on here. Uh, there's the setup button inside of the compartment as well to get that all paired and working correctly with the hub. But you can actually just hold this within 10 centimeters of a Philips Hue light. You're able to pair the two directly together. Working with the Philips Hue tap dial switch was incredibly easy and the configuration inside of the app is almost limitless. For each button, you have a press and a press and hold. You can't configure the press and hold, it's always lights off. But whenever you hit the press button, then you get a number of different behavior options depending on the lights that you're controlling. For a lot of the rooms, you will just find the options between a single scene, a scene cycle, and time-based light. Now time-based light means that you can set different times and different behaviors around the color temperature of your lighting. The scene cycle allows you to move between different scenes that you have associated with your lights. And the dial itself, I configured to use different lights throughout my home so you can really customize which lights you're using. The one thing that I ran into was that I had to create some zones in order to use the color features and I wasn't getting dynamic scenes just yet. Although I do expect dynamic scenes to work, it's just I can't get it configured right yet. I bought me something that's pretty special. Well, I think it's special. It's the Fire TV Remote Pro. Now, probably a lot of you have already seen a few videos about this. I saw Stu did one. I saw a couple other creators have already done videos with this. But the idea here, or the biggest part to me, is that the Remote Pro, number one, it's a bigger remote. It's got a few extra buttons. But the biggest thing is that you can execute Amazon routines with this bad boy. In the box, what do you get? Well couple of manuals, couple of batteries, couple of AAA batteries, and the remote. Now, if I'm being honest, this remote, it feels a lot different. Look at the differences here. So, well, it might be the same depth, but it doesn't feel like it because it seems like it's a bit wider. This is actually shorter and it feels a little bit less deep in terms of its dimensions versus the one I just got with the new Fire TV Cube. So this is a longer remote. This is kind of returning back to the same length as the other ones. The other big thing that I noticed here is the, the buttons light up. Now, how did I get those buttons to light up? I don't even know. Here, there's a light sensor. There is, there's some kind of light sensor on this that is turning on these buttons when I press it. So I think if it's dark enough, yeah, and it's the, the light up is happening all on all of these buttons. So this is gonna be a much better remote. 
it's it's enough that now I get why I bought it. And then of course, the biggest thing that you're getting with this are those two routine buttons. Let me show you what they can do. This remote is $35 US. So to justify that extra spend, Amazon had to do a few things very well. I think they did enough for most of us as the find my remote feature is excellent as long as you don't take it very far away from your Fire TV cube or stick. The buttons glowing actually work really well because they only glow when you pick up the remote or you move it. Then it glows for as long as it needs to and then it turns off the lights to save power. And finally, the shortcut buttons can do anything that Amazon's routines can do. That means they are incredibly powerful and I just wish I had a few more. In order to use them this way, you have to create a routine that you would otherwise start with your voice with Amazon's voice assistant. Once you have created that routine, then you head to your Fire TV with the remote and you start that routine using the remote and your voice, then you hold the routine button one or two for five seconds and up will pop the menu that shows you all the different things you can pick from. Now you can pick from many standard actions, so they can be buttons that help you navigate around your Fire TV. Or if you want that voice command that starts your routine, it'll show up at the top of the list of choices for that button. Then you pick that command and from that point forward when you press that button, the routine will run. Otherwise, the pairing process was as easy as it should be and the way the remote works in general is just as good as any other. So this is an easy recommendation to make if you want to do that extra bit of control and you just want to be able to find your remote easier in the dark. I thought I might fill in just a couple of things with some random stories. Now this mug right here, I mean I think a lot of people know that this comes from The Office. That's, that's the show The Office. Now I didn't get it for myself. Uh, I actually got it when I was leaving my previous company. This is one of the gifts that I got heading out the door from some of my friends. They thought, now that I'm starting my own company, I'm kind of heading out on my own. Well, I have to be the world's best boss, at least in my own mind. Let's get right into this one. I think I know what it is. Yes, I do know what it is, and it is pretty exciting. This is the Acara Cube T1 Pro. Now, the difference with this one is pretty exciting if you're someone who uses anything from Amazon. This is going to require a Zigbee hub from Acara, but after that, this is going to be able to connect to Amazon's voice assistant and start routines. Now, there's not a lot in the box. I got this thing, which helps you to open the cube. I got a little manual, well, actually, big manual, and I got the cube itself. Now, if you're not familiar with Akara's cube from before, basically, it allows you to kind of flip over in order to control different devices in different ways. Now, you used to only be able to do that inside of the Akara application, but now this is going to work with Amazon's voice assistant. So you're gonna be able to set up routines with at least six different ways we use this little thing to get in the back. A couple of little pulls, lever action there, and we get a CR2450 in there. So let's get this thing paired up with the Akara application. I'm gonna pair it to one of my hubs. Feels like I got a lot on the desk suddenly. I've got a bulb, I've got my Amazon Echo Dot 5th generation, and I have my Akara M2 hub plugged in. It's gotta be ethernet connected here in my home. And I've got the cube, of course. Now, let's get it paired. I'm gonna add an accessory in the Akara app. And I'm going to select, there is actually a Cube T1 Pro. And of course, please add accessory. I got a long press the reset button for five seconds. And then I should get a blue blinky light. Yes, I've got blue blinky lights. It's paired, it's in, I'm done. Very simple. I've got to name it, I've got to place it where I want to place it. And now it named it the Rubik's Cube sensor. So I took a quick look into what we can do. There is a shake, a rotate, uh, triggered after one minute of inactivity, so you leave it there for a minute, a pick up and hold, 
a face one up so you can see uh, the different numbers on the cube. I guess one is probably the name Akara. Then you've got face two all the way through face six up. And of course, you can flip it to any side as well in order to have that automation take place. So it's incredibly powerful just in the Akara app because obviously you can automate there in a lot of ways. And Akara's application from, you know, the automation standpoint is incredibly powerful. I actually showed that in our Smart Home Hubs 101 video, just how much you can do with their automations. But let's get it into Amazon and see what we can do. After connecting the Akara skill to Amazon's application, I found six devices that I could start routines with. Each one of these represented a side of the cube facing up. So if I switched to the Akara side facing up, the device that was numbered zero would show that motion was detected. Zero was found. So this acts like a button with six different options on it. And because of the numbers on each side of the cube, it's fairly easy to remember what it is you have it programmed for. For those of you using Apple HomeKit, the Cube T1 Pro will absolutely work with that. Right now I can't bring it in, but I believe that's all related to matter. Once it's in there, you'll get six different wireless switches that can start routines much the same way that you can start Amazon's routines. Routines. Inside of the Akara application, the routines start incredibly fast when you use the cube to trigger there. In scene mode, you're gonna get 11 different automation starters and in action mode, which is similar to the older cube, you get six. So as of now, the T1 Pro is an incredibly powerful automation product that is well thought out because it actually helps you to remember what it is you've programmed it for. So I'm gonna start with the Flex Fob. This is one of the most interesting products from Yolink, I think. And if you don't know a lot about them, that's because they're a relatively small smart home maker. But what's really interesting about them is their products use something called LoRa. And what it means is a lot of their devices work up to a quarter mile away. So we got the remote, it's pretty small, I like the footprint on that. What also is really nice about these, you know, right here, that code, that's all you scan to get it to come into the app. So really quite simple with these. Other than that, I, I get really excited about this product, especially if it starts those Amazon routines. Now the other one is called the Yolink Fob, so it's not called the Flex Fob, but I believe this one is intended, yeah, it's, it's intended as an alarm fob. So this is more for managing the alarm component of the Yolink system. Ready? I'm ready. Now, a little disappointing that I did not need my knife, but let's get over our disappointment quickly. Paper, box. All right, what do we got? Oh, let's start with the dimmer smart switch. We'll come back to this other stuff, but this is probably the most exciting product or at least the product that I was the most excited about at CES. Whoop, whoop. Ooh. We get a wall plate and then we get the switch itself. Plus we get some mounting hardware and a couple of manuals. Then I could throw everything else away. So nice and clean installation that we would go through. So you can see the plate is here. They have a battery tab, so I'm assuming as soon as I pull that out, we're gonna get a little bit of a light on this thing. Yeah, I've got some lights. We've got lights, people. Let's break this down, get it all ready, show you how easy it is. Now, that was obviously good sounding ASMR. And then basically you're just gonna pop that out. Now we've got the main plate that's gonna hide all of the, the screws and stuff. And you're gonna come put this over and you can screw just actually through the two of these uh, right like that. The battery in the back of this is a 2032. You have on and off buttons in the middle, and then this is brighten and this is dim. Quite simple. And now the nice thing about this is it's basically gonna pair with this other stuff. 
So uh, you've got, you've got a, a light bulb here, you've got a smart plug here. They also have wired switches within this lineup and this is going to pair as kind of an extra control. So you can put this anywhere you'd like and I mean even here if you want, I think you could pop this out. For the last month, I've actually been relatively impressed with GE in its ability to stay connected and the ease of the GE Sync application. Drawbacks for this system are obviously that they are Wi-Fi based and that your automation options are fairly limited as it just connects to Amazon and Google Voice Assistants. One neat feature of this is that some of the GE Sync products can be set up directly in the Google Home app without needing the Sync app entirely. Now, one of the most interesting things that has happened with all of these controllers is what I'm about to show you in this system from Tuya. That means it works with the Smart Life app. But what happened to me over this year is that you know, I, over the course of a year, I unplug and remove lots of smart home products. So I unplugged the hub that was controlling this dial and light bulbs that I had connected to it. Both of those are Zigbee products, but the engineering behind this system was actually remarkably good. So after everything was set up, I removed that hub from my network, and yet this dial continued to control the Zigbee light bulb. Even weirder was that the Zigbee light bulb was just a standard one from another maker and it shouldn't have even worked with this whole hub. The whole situation was mind boggling. But this other system from Broadlink, where's my, where's my clicker? This does the exact same thing. What's amazing about this is I can press one button on this and it goes out to three lights directly and I don't perceive any delays in controlling the three bulbs, even though the whole thing is being done on Bluetooth. What's interesting about this is that the Matter Smart Home Standard could actually ruin some of these opportunities. And I think that we have to be careful as we march forward to not stop this kind of innovation that has gone on in the past few years. So let's watch three product lineups that don't actually need hubs to control your smart home although they'll be better with a hub. Get excited with me, people. I'm really excited just for that. So this is from the folks at Broadlink. Now, they have a starter kit here that they've sent us, and there's a mini hub, a smart bulb, and a scene switch. But what's interesting about the scene switch to me uh, is it's battery powered. So we're not actually looking at having to install that. We will have to install the hub. Little tiny little manual here. I think give me this many smart bulbs. So these are Bluetooth and it's 4.0 and above. So I'm gonna start with the smart switch because I think that's the most interesting part here. Testing for sound quality. One, two, there's uh, one, two, three, four dots. I can open the whole thing. Look at that back, that's kind of neat. That's just a CR2430 battery. Honestly, the buttons feel really nice. There's four different buttons there. We're getting a manual, and then otherwise, it's just gonna connect to our little hub, which is remarkably small. This thing can't, oh. <laughs> there's not a lot to that. Uh, so our manual, there's a little power and a reset button on the back. It says fast con on it and you get this tiny little power cable. The, the more I get these little hubs and things, the more I feel like it's really important to have the smart power bars with the USB ports. Uh, a lot of them you just leave on indefinitely, you can't really control them anyways, but then I don't have to buy all the little dongles, all the little USB dongles that most of these companies don't give us anymore. So I'm actually more and more enjoying that fact in my life. Now here's a smart bulb. It's again, Bluetooth, 800 lumens bulb, full color, super light, like incredibly light. This stuff is, this. these are light, small products from Broadlink. Really interesting stuff. Would you guys like it if I cut one of these open and showed you what was in it? Would that be a fun kind of tutorial? Really great because look, I got candy. Now most of you don't know this, 
but I gotta check the ingredients because I gotta eat gluten-free. I'm sort of allergic to that there weedy substance. The other thing is, this is in uh, a type of German, so I can actually read it, which is something else most of you don't know. Oh, that is licorice -y. And they say it's toffee, hey? Mmm. Okay, I like that. Oh my gosh, there's more candy. Now, I think these are some limited edition black buttons. Now the flick buttons, if you guys haven't had any flick buttons in your home, yes, people come and they go, oh, but they're so expensive. Yeah, but they're actually really useful. And you know, Flick is moving forward with uh, their plans with Matter. So I got three buttons here, uh, and that means they're gonna be able to control just about everything in your home here very soon. Plus the Flick Twist, if you haven't seen that, honestly, that's one of the most exciting upcoming devices. Has been for a while, there's been some delays, but I can't wait. Now, if you've never seen a Flick button working, let me show you just a few things I've done with Flick buttons in my own home. This is a smart gateway. It's a Tuya one, and this is actually my first Zigbee gateway that is supposed to work with the Smart Life app. I've wanted to delve into that a little bit deeper as I've seen some of their matter compatibility discussions go on on the Tuya side. This is a really simple product, but it actually has 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi on it, Zigbee and Bluetooth. So I should be able to connect a few products to this, and then we're gonna see what we can make happen. Uh, USB-C cable here, and I mean, not a lot else. We've got a hub with just about nothing on it. There's a little button on the back, now they didn't give me a, a USB connector, so I'm gonna need one of those. And then otherwise, I'm good to start pairing things with this. It does allow connectivity to Amazon and Google, of course, and I wanna see if I'm gonna get a little more connectivity with this kind of a hub into SmartThings or into other hubs. So uh, that's one of the reasons I'm getting this. The other reason is just pure old curiosity. And we all know that killed the cat. Sometimes I just buy my own stuff and I went on AliExpress just the other day. It's a smart knob that really means a smart dial, which is a lot like the upcoming Flick device that's going to be released very soon. Now it's Zigbee controlled or Zigbee connected. So we get a manual, a sticker if you'd like it, a mounting plate as well if you'd like it, and then we have the physical device. Now, it actually turns very nicely. It's a push button as well. So very simple, and it has a couple of feet pads on the bottom that makes it a little bit like it adheres to a surface. I'm actually excited to try and get this paired to a couple of other Zigbee hubs. I don't imagine this is gonna work with Amazon directly. There are four functions on this. So there's a single press, then there's the ro rotate, which in general should be dimming a light. Then there's the push and rotate, and that's kind of the feature uh, that would put this on par with the flick button. Uh, and that's going to set the uh, color temperature. Then there's a hold for three seconds. So if you just hold that for three seconds, it should allow you to cycle through some colors on lighting. The other questions are, does this work with anything else? Everything you see in the next segment, I purchased. And that's saying a lot when you consider that the money we were making from these unboxing videos was almost nothing early on. Nowadays, it's getting more even to the money I spend every month, but there are some months that I still lose money and other months that I make money. But I would say it's about 50-50 as to what I buy and what I receive from companies. But what's funny is I can't get most companies to send me something in a reasonable time frame when it first comes out on the market, like this IKEA Dirajera hub. So this becomes a labor of love and I truly do love streaming devices, smart speakers, and hubs. And what has happened in a lot of cases with that style of device is that they've become multifunctional. A smart speaker always was multifunctional because it was a speaker and then it had all the smart components. But these days you might just get a smart speaker 
as a streaming device and also as a smart home controller. And your speakers are turning into Wi-Fi access points alongside being smart home hubs or smart home controllers. There's a lot packed into these devices and even more is packed in when you add a little accessory here or there. I bought myself an upgrade of something shiny. I swear those don't work. Yes, it is the new Fire TV Cube third generation. This is a much bigger box. The reason for upgrading today, you know what, it's gonna depend on who you are, but uh, a couple of the reasons you might look at this, Wi-Fi 6E is available on that, so that's six gigahertz Wi-Fi. You might also want it for one of the new features, actually one of the new ports on this device. On the packaging, they're giving us some optimal placement instructions, actually. You know, at first I thought this adapter was, was white and I was gonna have something to complain about with Amazon, but actually, I have something else to complain about Amazon. I can't get into your, come on, it keeps ripping. There, that'll do, rabbit. That was pretty good. Here's everything you get in the box. Couple of manuals that tell you where to go and who to be. Couple of batteries for your Amazon voice remote. There is an option to buy this with the voice remote pro, which I could swear I did, but didn't get it. Then you have the power adapter, which is specifically made for your Fire TV Cube third generation and the Fire TV Cube itself. When you compare the two, honestly, there's not much comparison in terms of the look and feel of this right off the bat. I think the cloth was a really important improvement and actually the edges are quite rounded. This, this second generation, like it'll still cut me. It's been years and this knife won't get dull. The top even looks a little more refined. The buttons look a little better. Now on the back, you're probably noticing a lot of differences and I think a lot of these differences are really important. That HDMI input, that's a really important component because it allows you to connect uh, game consoles. You can switch over to uh, watching or playing games instead of watching the Fire TV. Uh, and then you can connect cable boxes. Some cable boxes are officially supported. And something really important about this is this is Dolby Matte, uh, Dolby MAT enabled. So you are going to be able to pipe Dolby content through that. Now, another thing that you can buy with the Fire TV Cube third generation is an IR extender. Uh, that would get you the ability to control other devices. Although I have found it fairly limited what you can control with that. So maybe have a look at their list of what they can do. The HDMI out, pretty much the same on these two devices. And really the power port is very similar. Now what happens on the older Fire TV cubes is you have this micro USB and that's how you could connect all kinds of different things from USB sticks uh, to a lot of other peripherals like an ethernet adapter. But this time Amazon gave us a 10 slash 100 megabits per second ethernet port directly on here and a USB-A. So that's obviously going to allow you to split out those components and do more with this. Now that USB port can be very powerful for connecting uh, more storage and that can let you get more onto this device in general. But let's boot her up, see what she sounds like. Uh, volume buttons, so here's the plus. Uh, that's as loud as it goes, but honestly, it's pretty loud for what is essentially a voice interface. You're not gonna use this as your TV speaker. There's the microphone mute button. 
And this is basically to call up the voice assistant instead of saying the wake word, which you can do. And that's one of the benefits of the Fire TV Cube over Fire TV Sticks. Uh, you have the ability to just call up the voice assistant instead of using the voice remote, which does have a button on it. You can hold that and then you'll be able to speak into the mic and give commands to this device. The remote itself, uh, this feels a lot bigger to me. I'm pretty sure it is. Now, that's the voice remote button at the top. Otherwise, you have all the different controls that you might need. You can go back to the home page and there's always this menu button for bringing up additional options. Plus you have these other control elements for moving around your television. There's the four quick buttons down at the bottom. You have the volume and channel up buttons which would work with those uh, cable boxes if you have them. One other big benefit of this versus, uh, you know, some of the Fire TV sticks, although the 4K Max has this feature as well, there's a live picture in picture option for some of the connected doorbells and cameras. You can actually ask for them to come up or when they're rung, you can have them show up in a picture in picture format so it doesn't actually interrupt your uh, viewing. The other nice thing about Fire TV cubes that you might not know, although this does go back to the second generation, you can connect webcams to this. So that USB port on the back there would allow you to do that too. There's nothing to do now except get this set up, test out the content. I'm expecting it to be very uh, similar to the previous Fire TV Cube and the Fire TV 4K Max with some minor differences, but let's get this set up and see what it does. After playing with this for a while, this is clearly the fastest Fire TV device I've worked with. Moving around the interface is incredibly snappy now and downloading of apps was fast. Plus the resolution came in very quickly off of the Wi-Fi connection I was using. So I'm not even using ethernet yet. Setup took moments because I could just connect it to an existing account and that's part of the ease of buying from Amazon directly. Amazingly in minutes I was able to download Amazon's Luna gaming service and Prime members get a few games to play. Now that's only available in the US but I'm going to use a VPN that I have access to in order to be able to play those games. I've done it before and it's a lot of fun and of course you can connect Bluetooth controllers and some of the games use the remote itself. Now the remote itself is a little bit loud as you click the main navigation buttons. It's a little bit louder than it was in the past. So be ready for that little change plus the size difference. I really do enjoy that the lights on the device turn off after a few seconds. So you're not having that mute red light sitting there all the time on the device. It just fades away. So from an overall standpoint, this is the best Fire TV Cube and the best Fire TV experience by a long shot. This one says it's from Lushy Industrial Building, which scares me a little alongside the packaging here. Okay, now I knew this one was coming but I didn't expect it to get here so soon. This is really neat. So this is from Me Cool. And it's basically an Android TV, but it's more than that. It is a lot bigger than I thought. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Now in the back, so we've got HDMI, we've got a actual ethernet port, which I like. I'm not sure what we're gonna use the USB port, but I'm hoping for some peripherals. And then we have a DC in for the power. On the top, you can clearly see a mute microphone button. So this must be full Google Assistant, almost like a Google Home speaker, just with Android TV on it. The remote looks fairly nice. It's a sizable remote, but I love all the different buttons that are on here. Like that's a really nice uh, angle to the whole device. So really, really different design coming out here from me. While I was uh, actually down here opening some other stuff, this showed up at the door and I'm pretty sure I know what I bought on this one. And I did buy this one. I got here quick. This is the Mission USB charging hub for the Amazon Echo fourth generation. Step one, 
Screw charging hub to bottom of Amazon Echo. Step two, plug in USB powered devices to the charging hub. There we go. Little instruction manual. That's all I got. Oh, so how does that work? So in the front, you're getting three ports on this thing. So three USB ports. I mean, there's nothing else. There's no other. I thought I was gonna be plugging into the back of this thing and then putting the Echo on here, but I'm not. Let's, let's try it. I'm as surprised as you are, but there's actually two things on the bottom here. And I think I can remove this little port here. I probably got a better. So I did, I popped that out. This goes on here. I've had this figure like two years. I, <laughs> now I'm screwing that on. Now the ports have to go in the back. So keep that in mind, but there's how it looks. And let's get it plugged in and see what we can power here. 1.5 amps per port. Let's find out what is 1.5 amps and what isn't. We got one. Now I'm gonna get SwitchBot. Can't, ooh, ooh, ooh. okay. Okay, that's not enough. So 1.5, oh, oh. Well, we'll see if that boots up. And I'm gonna charge an iPad, let's see. Yep, totally charging. I don't even have a knife. I promise it's not the whole Amazon show here today. It's the Echo Dot fifth generation. Clearly you can see I've got a few fourth uh, generation dots here on the table, but there are a couple of significant upgrades to this. Here's what you get inside the box. You get your adapter, looks like the same as previous generations. It's a 15 watt adapter, plus a couple of user manuals there, and the Echo Dot 5 itself. Now this is the one with the clock, and I bought that because it has an upgraded display. Hello, your device is ready for setup. Just follow the instructions in your Alexa app. Hola. Vamos a empezar. Instala la app de Alexa y sigue las instrucciones. Bonjour. Votre appareil est prêt pour la configuration. I did nothing. It's joined my network. It's fully updated. There's a little button here on my phone that says, okay, do the final little bit of setup. So I'll tap that. Try saying, find restaurants that do. No, thank you. Okay, let's move on. Here's something fun. You can broadcast a voice announcement to all. No, thank you. In a lot of cases, this is gonna feel a lot more like an Echo fourth generation to you because the new features that they have, the 50% uh, deeper bass or more bass put into this. This also has Eero built in. So if you have an existing Eero system, then you're going to be able to extend your Wi-Fi network with an Echo Dot. Now the crazy thing here is all of these Echo Dots, these are Echo Dot fourth generations, they're gonna be able to do the same thing as well as the Echo fourth generation. So you don't necessarily uh, need to buy it for that specifically. There is an ambient temperature sensor on here, but let's have a listen and see what the difference is. I'm gonna, we're gonna do this at 100. important question is, should you upgrade? And just from the music demo, you know what? There is enough of a jump here. It's not massive, but you're gonna notice it day to day. Uh, it was definitely clearer overall because of the improvements in the bass and it was just a more rounded speaker. So I feel like it's worth it from that perspective. The funny thing though, was that I could pair the two speakers together in a stereo pair and it worked. The other big thing that you might miss is there's no 3.5 millimeter output jack on this. So you're not going to have that connection anymore. 
The other thing is, yeah, these are both the displays. They're in adaptive brightness mode. Um, but the biggest thing is this just looks interesting. It looks much better and there's more components to it. So they're going to be able to do more, show you different messages on this. And that's exactly what uh, they've done. I do like this fairly light color too. And uh, this is the first one with Eero built in. So if you really need that Eero built in, then you should go get that. Who knows the timeline on um, getting that upgrade in the Echo Dot 4 or the Echo 4th generation. One of the things I really did like about the Fire TV Cube was when I turned on the mute microphone, this went away. Uh, and I don't see that now on this. There are the tap features on this. They're extended over this. So this is just gonna let you snooze alarms, but on top, you can also dismiss the alarms and calls, drop-ins, and it says advanced. Uh, when you look at the tap gestures that are available, uh, I now have pause and resume media. So if something is playing on here, I can tap to pause and resume. So there's a limitation for you actually. I was playing Bluetooth music from my phone and I tried the tap controls to pause and resume. No dice, but uh, now that I'm playing from Amazon Music, now, we invite you to relax. And it's actually really good. Like that's a really nice uh, tap gesture. I'm not feeling like I've tried it six or seven times. It, it seems to work every time. But those tap gestures are quite sensitive. So if someone's gonna play with the speaker, the music isn't gonna stay on. In terms of routines, you can trigger with the temperature or the occupancy sensor. So that's the same as the previous generation. That's really it from the Amazon Echo Dot perspective. What do you guys think? Are you gonna upgrade? Now, all year, I have used a Captain America coaster for whatever drink I've had with me. And 90% of the time it's coffee because, well, I'm completely addicted. But it's a Captain America coaster. My kid got me this set of four coasters that I have around my home. And, you know, I just try to make sure that one of them is in every room just because they're so much fun. They're totally a guy thing. So, you know, I've got to have them everywhere I go. I got my big trusty knife. This is the most giant one ever, but uh, this one, I happen to know a little bit of what's inside on this one. This is called Hoobs and it's a home bridge and it's actually uh, gonna be probably the most expensive thing that we talk about today. Now, a home bridge in general, it brings products from uh, not compatible with Apple HomeKit into Apple HomeKit. And so there's a lot of reasons if you're kind of exploring Apple HomeKit to have a look at something like this. It's a very small, unassuming device. There's not a lot here to see. It does have that ethernet port. Also in the box, there's a getting started card. A thank you for your purchase and uh, how to get support. A uh, USB to micro USB cable, a power adapter, and an ethernet cable. And really, from here, what you're supposed to do is start connecting a lot of different devices into Apple HomeKit. It's time for a brand new hub. Yeah, that's right. It's the Didgeridoo hub from Ikea. Now this is the one that is supposed to be a matter bridge, a matter controller. This is the whole upgrade to their smart home app. So it can work in the old app and the new app. Now here's the funny thing. This is supposed to have Zigbee, Thread, Wi-Fi, should have a ton of different things. Right now, when you get the labeling here, it says it works with Amazon and Google and HomeKit, works with Ikea's Home Smart app, and there's no matter marking on here. I see nothing related to thread, so uh, they probably couldn't label it that way. So here's what you get in the box. 
four different pieces of paper, including a manual, you know, Ikea manuals. There is an adapter here, kind of a strange one. So that's gonna plug in like that. So that's kind of what it's gonna look like. There's a USB-A on the side. You get a fairly nice cable here with a nice little strap on it. Uh, it goes from USB-C to USB-A. You get an ethernet cable. Again, feels luxurious in my hands. And you get the hub itself. Now the hub has a little like tab on here. Huh? You know, it's got Ikea branding on it. It's got its ethernet port and there's the USB-C where you're plugging in to power. There is a HomeKit code on the back here and there's a QR code for setup plus this little action button right here. So is this working? Am I getting action yet? There's also uh, a chance to hang this up. So this could actually sit on the wall with the right little uh, screw in there and there is a reset button. Let me get this plugged in and let's do a setup right here, right now with a motion sensor and a smart bulb from Ikea. These are existing ones in my home too. So let's see. I have my hub plugged in. I had to get an extra long ethernet cable, which I bought so many years ago. Thank goodness I did. And now I've downloaded the Ikea home smart application. And it says, hey, welcome to this new app. Oh, my smart products. Oh, oh, this hub is at the heart of my smart home. I'm ready to get started. They're asking, now this is a very nice statement from Ikea. Hey, we wanna use some cookies. We wanna look at the app data. We wanna improve your experience using that data. No, I don't consent. I don't have to consent. And it says it's totally voluntary and it won't affect how this actually works, this app. Let's get started. Make sure the hub is plugged in and connected. Wait for the ring to fill with the light. Yeah, and it was kind of like a half moon earlier. Now it's a full moon with a hole in it, which is a conspiracy theory. <laughs> and it'll pulse when it's ready. My hub is ready, let's hit it. Now it's looking for hubs. How fast, how fast? Come on, they found my hub, see? I really do like the look of this. It's not nearly as bulky as the previous version of Ikea Hub. So this ring light here, it's totally a progress ring. So as it gets around, then you know that whatever process it's in is completing. Time to confirm my hub. All I gotta do is press this little button. Okay, I did it. My hub has been added. We're all done. For now, the app is much improved. The setup process was much better. The only problem I'm having right now is I got things updating all over the place. I like the, the way the application feels and I'm excited to start bringing in other products in using Matter in just a little bit. At this point, the IKEA Dirigera hub is a lot like the previous hub with a new wrapper known as the new app. The new app is nice and the integration with Amazon and Google was even easier than standard integrations. However, I can't integrate with Samsung SmartThings. My motion sensors didn't show up in the Google or Amazon apps. However, Apple HomeKit does allow that kind of an action and automations with the motion sensor. So for right now, the matter features, the thread features, the additional integration options just aren't there. So hang on tight. And when we start to get those features, I'll let you know in our news video. The further we go on Automate Your Life and the longer I go without addressing Home Assistant in a real direct way, the bigger the pressure I feel to do that. And it's, it's so funny because it's not like Home Assistant is used by millions and millions of people. It's, it's not. But people who use this platform, they need to talk about it. They need to say how good it is. And they're, they're building this life. And it's because, you know, Home Assistant is attached to an idea of local and private and secure and all of these things. And so, um, you know, when I don't address it, people often wonder what that's all about. I think for me, there's a certain point, there's a certain tipping point of where home automation becomes not worth it. And it's not that I don't think that the complexity of Home Assistant and that system 
is not one of the best, if not the best. Uh, it's that I think that the time that you have to spend on getting to that complexity is not worth the improvement in your life. And for some people, it will be. And I'm not saying that I won't ever delve into that system on the channel, but there has to be a certain point for me where it kind of goes over that, that tipping point and it becomes more worth it from a time standpoint. And that's because I attach so much importance to time. And you know, there's a couple of stories that I've shared on the channel about that and why that's so impactful to me. But I think, you know, just at a basis, time is the one thing you can't get back. So as I sit here and I tell you that, this is a message to me that feels important enough to share, to spend not just my time, but your time as well. So I hope that that makes sense. And, you know, I'm not ignoring Home Assistant. I actually use it uh, in my home at some level because I have to keep up with it. But uh, it's not something that I want to promote because I don't think it's quite there. Nothing wrong with you doing it. And I will support you in different ways with uh, some of our tutorials, but I won't necessarily say that that's the platform that I think everyone should use. Now, if I'm being honest, I'm a bit of a dummy when it comes to unique smart gadgets. Honestly, there are moments when I overlook the actual usefulness of a device because it is something that is unique and interesting. Sometimes I could just care less about what it does because it does something that I've never seen before. These coming products are exactly that. Some of them provide really unique features, but also provide really useful features. And other ones are just an interesting piece of technology and really the result of there being a market for nearly anything today. So bear with me as I feed my incessant need for weird technology in my life. What we're talking about is the SwitchBot lock today. So this is ready for release. I'm gonna pick up all of this later. There is literally no easier lock I have ever seen to install on a door. There's nothing to replace. This basically goes over your lock. I had to take a picture of my door lock before they sent me this. It's just gonna spin your lock. That's really all it is. It's quite a simple mechanism. Ah, I think they actually did make this uh, for my lock. So this is gonna switch off this, off the back. That's it, I'm done. So now this just fits on my lock. I, you gotta love that. So actually when I look at all of the different ones they've sent, you know, this is pretty standard, uh, but they've also sent this really, really wide one. So I think what they did, since they had sent this as part of the Christmas advent calendar that they were sending to creators, I think they included just some wider ones. I think they probably got that feedback. The interesting thing is gonna be if, you know, if you have a really uh, far out locking mechanism, maybe this won't fit your house or, uh, if you have kind of a longer lock on the inside, I don't know, it might, it might not. It's gonna, it's gonna depend on a few measurements. Now within the package, they also gave me a couple of SwitchBot tags. So not only did I get some extras, but I got that in the box as well. So I'm gonna get this one right on my door cause I am doing that review, but this is another exciting product to me. Pretty sure I know what this one is, but you always gotta dig in. Of course, we're talking about the SwitchBot keypad that goes with the SwitchBot lock. Two CR123A should give you a couple of years of battery life. I really like how these batteries feel to the touch and I'm, I'm liking this is a little bit of a matte finish on this. All kinds of stuff in this. Here's our user manual. We got some wet wipes. That's to make sure wherever you're mounting this is clean. Uh, they got a little help key. I don't know what that is, but it's kind of like a credit card. Maybe I can buy anything uh, from SwitchBot now for free. We've got a mounting plate. This is nice, uh, it feels nice, and there's two pins back here. You can see those, and then basically that's what you're gonna get on. 
and then you're gonna go up like that. To release, you have to get in behind here. So that's usually uh, with a pin and they give you a little reset pin. So I'm gonna assume, I'm gonna stick that in there and I am seeing it, I'll show you in another angle here, but I am seeing it uh, actually move the little piece that would allow you to unmount this. They give you a sticker for your mounting screws, that pin, and if you want, you can just mount it with the 3M tape. Not sure what the triangle is for. I remember SwitchBot sending that with something else. Uh, you're mounting hardware, and in case you need them, a couple of these little spacers. This is called the SwitchBot keypad touch. Now the difference, obviously, is the touch. I, I really enjoy the idea of this, otherwise it's really got the same specifications as the other model. So let's break into this, and by break I mean open it. I do like the form factor for this fairly, fairly well, like it's not huge, it's not tiny either, but the honest truth is as of now, and I'll write it in the video as we go here, I haven't had great success with the lock itself. Now I know there's a, a different version coming, but honestly the lock hasn't been what I've needed it to be. This is an NFC card. So you only get one with these keypads, but uh, I really do love that. So that's, you can tap that on the front of this, now, I don't remember the number of people that you can put into this for sure, but I think the number is eight, eight different fingerprints. And for me, this is the model I'm gonna use every time. You have the NFC card, plus you have the fingerprint, plus you have the code. Uh, you could set up all kinds of different codes in the app. So from a software perspective, this is a fantastic offering combined with the lock. might be the most controversial product I have ever opened up on the channel. That's right, it is a gun safe. The Wise gun safe, it's meant to be quick access. You can see that it's gonna work with the Wise application. It says it's storing up to 20 fingerprints, 195 cubic inches in storage space. And of course, with any sort of device like this, you're gonna want a manual key backup. Pretty obvious from the marketing that this is an international man of mystery. I can't say international man of mystery, can I? Uh, it's an international person of mystery. Manual backup keys, mounting kit, and AA batteries. People have strong opinions about, you know, guns and having guns in a home. And, uh, you know, I have my own personal opinions about them. For me, I'm kind of just excited to have a safe. Uh, I haven't had one for a long time. One thing I'm noticing right off the bat is that they made this with lock-in again, and that was the company that helped them build the Wise door lock. I know you guys liked it when I threw things at the camera last time, so so I'm reading the, reading the manual. Looks like I, okay, neat. That's where the keyhole is. Let's get in there. I don't know if that's a charging port. <laughs> My disaster. It's more of an electronic than it is, I think, uh, a safe, at least initially. But I'm interested to see what you guys want to see with this one. There's a pin code. There is. Please open the Wise app to add this device. It's got some good rubber feet. Like, I don't feel like those are going to have any problems. <laughs> Now you open the Wise app. So if you do uh, run out of batteries, there is an emergency power port here. I think that's a really smart design feature by Wise. I like the different backups that we have to open this so you're not stuck 
with a bunch of, uh, you know, smart ways to do that. Now this product is kind of disappointing in a lot of ways because it could be one of the best dashboards in all of our smart homes. And it could be an inexpensive way for us to build those dashboards. But it just takes too much work to get it to happen. And so I gave up after having this for a little while. But it's become something that I look at every day simply because I put the weather on it and I can see the forecast for the next few days and it always looks very interesting. Plus I can switch uh, to other types of screens, other information, and my kid can play little games on it or can color digitally. So it's actually really fun to have but it's entirely useless from a smart home perspective. This is from a company called Devoom, and you know what? They have had some very, very interesting products over the years. So this is called the Pixu 64. It's a digital wall art frame. And the idea with this is you can display a number of different components in your home, number of different things you like to track. Ooh, here's what we have. This is quite a different looking frame. Now, it's certainly a reflective screen and that's gonna be annoying for me as a content creator because every time I show you it, well, you get to see everything else going on behind there. You can probably see how messy things are. The last thing that's in here is a charging cable and it is USB-C. There's a USB port and then a little micro SD card, which I assume has the entire program as it's needed on it today. And then that gives you a little extra storage space here. So I've got everything out of the box and I wanna show you a few things that I figured out here in a couple of minutes. Now you have these holes around and there's one on the top here. I'm gonna call that the top. And then there's, there's two on the bottom here. Now these are the little mounting uh, hooks, we'll call them, and then they screw into the top. So this allows a really, really easy mounting method. You only get two of these hooks, but there you go. That makes it really, really easy to mount this thing. Your other options, you know, you can mount uh, back here. They do give you if, you, if you wanted to just use screws and put those into the back. They were thinking about how to get this through. So I like that they thought about that. I like that it's USB-C and I like that I could replace that micro SD card if I ever needed to. The other thing that's really interesting is we can just get right in here. And now I have a stand that goes in to that. So I'm sure you can see my camera here, but now I have it on a stand. I just gotta plug this thing in and we're ready to go. Uh, so I'm gonna show you a quick demo here, but this is unboxed. If you wanna see more about this one, let me know if you'd like a, like a full review. Don't tell anyone except who's watching this video, but I'm breaking the law right now because this doesn't even have my name on it. This is maybe wild stuff here, guys. This says Ampere Dusk on it. You know, Stu did one for the energy challenge, actually. He did the Ampere Shower Speaker. And I mean, if you didn't see Stu in the bathtub for a very long time, you should definitely watch that. Polarized lenses blocking 100% of UVA and UVB. <laughs> I can't get into the case. What do you do for a living, Brian? I open stuff on camera, but I can't really get it open on camera. And then I can see the little speakers, but it is magnetic, so it did just, you know, oh, oh, I'm, I'm backwards. Look at that. Love that cable. Right here, there's a couple of buttons. Power on, power off, pairing through Bluetooth, play and pausing of music. They got voice control. So this is gonna allow you to get to your voice assistance. Now the left arm button, this other one is gonna adjust the tint. Nothing left to do but put them on. 
What do you guys think? I'm Batman. No, really, I'm Batman. Just about every creator after a few, uh, a few years will come out and they'll create some kind of product. And, you know, most of my products have been digital downloads and I'm not trying to do anything uh, too fancy on that side of things. Although I think I will probably do some pretty big courses as uh, YouTube launches that opportunity for us creators, I think, next year sometime. Um, but, you know, a lot of the shirts that I've created and a lot of the products that I've created, those are things that uh, actually we designed ourselves, like the slogans and, and everything like that. And that's something that I worked with uh, Madeline on. She came up with, I would say, about half the slogans. And actually, uh, the the Darth Vader shirt, oh, I can't even say that, can I? The The not Darth Vader shirt uh, that we created that says come to the smart side uh, That was her idea. So I can't even take credit for that. I'm just not that bright. Now this one says Blue tiger on the box. What is this? This can be extremely interesting as a product now this is a headset it's Bluetooth 5.0 but there's a couple of really different features in here to separate it from some others. Now, the Bluetooth capability, obviously you're gonna get some quick pairing instructions or some pairing instructions. This is a solar charging device. It says it's always charging. So it looks like this whole strip is basically gonna take light from the surroundings and charge this. Looks like we've got a little stand for this. Nice little uh, leather stand actually or I don't know is that pleather or leather I think it's leather guys so this is nice feeling up here on the top on my noggin we've got a little dial here that seems to be releasing so this is how you tighten up once you've got it kind of set now it's fairly well set in there we've got a little uh, light slash button on the side here and then there's a bunch of different buttons here so one plus and a minus, which you gotta think are uh, volume buttons. And here's my little charging port. Okay, so this is an adjustment too. This flexes, obviously. Here's your length adjustment, if you'd like it. Uh, this is softer. I don't know that that's super soft, so that might bug you after a little bit. Blue Tiger USA, gonna download this real quick. Blue Tiger, look at that it's loading screen. Oh, that's a fun loading screen. So I'm gonna get this set up and connected. I think it needs a bit of time to charge and then I'm gonna show you how it works. Okay, I took a few minutes and I think I figured everything out here. This is not a stand. <laughs> this is a hanger. So it'll hang off the side of whatever you'd like. You have an opportunity to take that and go further out if you need to. Then, I've got a little bit of a charge on this thing. And I hit scan. Scanning, scanning. Oh wait, I gotta hold this for five seconds. You know what? I'm just gonna pair them through Bluetooth. Now they did. Now I have 50% battery. And let's go into the app. Ooh. Now we have quite the interface. And this is an indicator for how much charge you're getting. And then you can see in the app, it actually gives you a drain in milliamps and then a gain based on what you're pulling out of. Well, it's, it's just magical. Let's call my dad, see what happens. Hello, can you hear me? How does it sound? I sound normal? Well, I'm using a headset, I'm using like a it's a solar powered headset, mom. I know. And guess what? You're uh, on a video. <laughs> well, no one can, no one can hear you, mom. <laughs> That's pretty exciting. Well, oh, let's see how far I can walk. Now, I'm what you would call a Canadian boy from the prairies, and that means I enjoy a good Canadian company. And having worked in engineering offices in the past. I just get excited when I hear about other Canadians working in that kind of an environment and building something both unique and at the same time really powerful. 
I honestly get a little bit proud when those products are high quality and they're doing the things that you guys are asking me for on a regular basis. So it's just honestly nice to show these products from Sinope. By the way, I already have more than what you're gonna see here they are all just as good. Now, this is a super different product. I'm betting there's nobody out there who's seen this product before. I haven't seen this one until they reached out to us. Now, they're gonna stretch my French enunciation or pronunciation, so I'm not gonna bother trying to say their name. I'm excited on this. Whoa, what is going on, man? So this is called the Sedna water leak detection uh, or detector with a perimeter cable. On the side it says NeviWeb, SmartThings and Hubitat and it also says it's Zigbee 3.0. So this is a Zigbee water detector and this is a seven foot long perimeter cable that's gonna go around. Now I don't know which end is gonna go into the leak detector just yet, but either way, this is a really different uh, cable, a, a leak detection cable. I've never seen one that is this sealed, but it has a really different construction. Like there's a little black, and I'm guessing that's the detection wire. Now I can see on this sensor, very small uh, footprint, or not, not like super small or anything, but I see a couple of batteries in there. So I'd be able to break into this to change those batteries. And then I have some mounting and because we're doing everything with a cable, this can pretty much sit anywhere. So I've got the mounting uh, screws or I've got the 3M tape. It's pulled off the cover, it's a little magnetic cover. Really nice design going on here and it just says Zigbee 3.0. Now, I wonder if I can link this just direct to some of those hubs. I'm gonna try that, I'll let you know. I've got some mounting stickers, some extra mounting stickers. I've got some mounting hardware in case you want that. I've got a little quick start guide and then I've got some, oh, I've got some mounting hardware for the cable itself if you wanna kind of manage where that's going exactly. They've got little stickers on here and then obviously you can route the cable through that. Now that's only one component of this system that I've been sent today. So this is the flow sensor from the same company. A flow sensor is pretty much one of these types. There's, there's a few different types like an ultrasonic and this is looking just like it basically moves the little more or less fan in there as water goes through your system. And then the speed of that is going to tell you how much flow is going through there. Pretty good for water. You're not having to do uh, much in terms of kind of changing the measurement. And they tell you which direction the water needs to be flowing in for this to work. And then it just looks like a pretty simple connection point. I'm guessing to the water valve. So this has got to be close to your water valve. You got a little bit of threaded plumbing work to do here. That's not difficult stuff for, for most people. It'll go up to 250 PSI. Its range is four to 45 liters a minute. That's right, this is a company from Quebec. We use liters. And I've got a guide in English and French. Gotta love that. And we're on to the big boy. This is the actual valve itself. This is something that I'm going to have to do some plumbing work in order to install. But I can also see that this is working with Amazon and Google right here on the box. Something that's become immediately clear is you could have multiple of these uh, leak sensors here. You don't just have to have one. Okay, well, I got, okay, one, two more leak sensors. I can see that they have the spot for the leak detection cable. So if they uh, sense anything, and then this looks to me, it's a Zigbee. Oh, it's another type of leak sensor. Wow, I don't know what the cost is. I imagine it's pretty high, but uh, right there, you can see the two leads. So this is just a sit on the floor type of leak sensor. This is one you could get additional cables for your perimeter cables. So there's a couple of different types of leak sensors and the fact that they sent me five, six, six? I can do math. Six of these things in one package says you can cover your whole home with this system. So I like that. We've got some mounting hardware, some mounting stickers. This is another one. So this is another style of leak detection with that same cable. So there we go. 
I've got that absolutely deluxe. Got a little power adapter. I assume that's for the water valve itself. Now, the device itself has a open and close buttons on it, so you'd be able to physically do that. The DC power adapter is back here. So this is gonna be how it looks on my installation. This is threaded inside here, and there is a PN rating on this of PN16. Plus it says DN25 in case you wondered that. So I plugged the thing in. You can see just some, some lights on here. We've got these two buttons on the front and then I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna hit the close button. Nice and smooth. I didn't feel anything vibrating or moving outside of this compartment. I didn't even feel this compartment vibrating. So nice and smooth, exactly what I'm expecting. And that, you would kind of call that a ball or a globe valve even. It's, it's surprising how they did that in there, actually. And when you feel inside of here, you can feel it's kind of a rounded curve. This helps to, to break some of the pressure as things close off. You would end up with a little bit of water inside that ball that's essentially been formed in there, or globe that's essentially been formed. So both sides of it, you're feeling that. Now, obviously you're gonna create those automations in the app. I'm gonna see how all that works. And then we're gonna get some of these leak sensors working with this. The aftermath story of this set of products is that I can't install two out of three of them without getting a plumber in. So I won't be doing that here. Uh, however, I love the battery backup option on the actuator and I have tested the valve's communication over the month. It works great in the NeviWeb app, but when I brought it over to SmartThings, that became a cloud connection. This company does have other Zigbee versions that will go right into your hub. So that would be something I'd probably suggest if you wanna use SmartThings or Hubitat. In terms of the leak sensor, other than being really expensive, I was really impressed with those. And the battery life is extremely high. Plus that perimeter cable is such a useful feature for large spaces. And you could just cover that space with one big sensor. So if you're using two or three today, then you might be able to get one of those and it does directly pair with those hubs. Yeah, why didn't we get the heavy one? It's 70% relative humidity in my studio, and that's not just from me sweating carrying this box from Medea, which is the Smart Dehumidifier with a pump. Pretty sure this is the first dehumidifier I've seen with any sort of smart features. And this, by the way, alongside some other AC units that they have, is part of the energy challenge that we talked about a few months ago on the channel. Quick start guide. I hope you guys like my shorts. They're pretty stylish. What do you think? Oh, good lord. Oh. Oh. My pipe is bent. We got four casters and some little, I think these are just connection plates for the bottom. Uh, we've got a user manual. Actually, not that uh, deluxe. You don't have to go through that much with it. This is the outlet hose, I think, and an inlet hose. Man, I don't know what that thing is. It must be another type of hose. We got a big old bucket. And the actual installation of this thing is quite simple. So it comes in the box like this. You can do that lift and you turn 90 degrees. And as you place it in, give it a turn, you have this going on. So this is gonna show you how much water you've actually collected. This is just, if you wanna drain straight out uh, into the drain in your home, you can do that through there. Now on this side of the unit, we also have a pump. So. This specific one, this is a pump outlet, so you can turn on the pump here. This cable, I could just basically pull this out. 
Okay, and we got these little clips here that I can push back in. On this is where you put the casters. If you want the casters, you're basically gonna slide them in. You're just gonna push that down. Now, I'm not actually gonna put the casters in because I'm on my table and I don't want things to roll. I mean, I'm super strong, so this thing must weigh thousands of pounds because look, I'm struggling to do that. <laughs> yeah, thousands. Okay. So you can see all the buttons on the front here. Got a lot of different control on screen or on the top of this. Basically, it's gonna take in, and there's a filter here, where it's gonna take in the air, uh, clean out the water, so to speak, and then push out uh, dehumidified air, which is really nice when you get 70% humidity. The big point of these is that they work with both Google and Amazon voice assistants, plus they work with If This Then That, which will actually give me a lot of access to a lot of humidity sensors very quickly. Change dehumidifier to low. Dehumidifier on. Okay. Now this one's not such an energy challenge type of product, although everything coming from Medea is Energy Star certified. So they are very energy efficient for what they are. My plan with this is twofold. Number one, I'm gonna deal with the humidity down here. That is far too humid. Uh, and then in my garage in the winters, what happens is, um, like my garage door will just get frozen water droplets all along it and you actually can just rip the bottom off of a garage door here in Canada very easily when it's really humid and it's a smaller garage. So this is gonna be put in there. It's gonna clear out that humidity in winters and keep it keep me from ruining my garage. So it's actually gonna save me quite a bit of money. App setup takes just minutes with the Medea Air application and it actually connected very easily. As you get the device installed, it becomes very easy to configure and control. You just go into the actual device and all of the controls that sit on the physical device sit within the app. So I really enjoyed that. Plus there are a number of pre-created scenes for you that you can tap on, or you can create your own scene to adjust how the device is working. Plus you have this little slider at the top to just target a specific humidity. And when you choose the control option, it'll just go to that. You can schedule this device to just run and you can change that configuration at any time. Plus you can adjust all the modes for how you drain it. Now the most useful thing to me was if this then that with this because of those humidity sensors. So I configured the SwitchBot humidity sensor, but What's really great about their trigger conditions is you can use temperature and humidity. So I ended up creating three different applets to maintain this. Turn on the dehumidifier to low at a certain humidity. Turn off the dehumidifier once we have it low enough. And if the temperature gets too high because it does pump out a little bit of hotter air, turn off the dehumidifier again. It's been strange to watch certain product categories explode in the last year, and one of those categories is air purifiers. At the start of this year, I don't think I had ever spoken to a company about an air purifier and bringing that onto the channel, but by the end of this year, I had four that had rolled into my home and for the most part out. So to end 2022, we've had this landslide of companies making air purifiers, but my favorite one was from a company I had never heard of. It had the best integration features and it works perfectly with Amazon's air quality sensor that I wish I had unboxed on the channel, but never did. Hi, Drio, breathe purer live fresher. You breathe pure, live fresher. So it's obviously an air purifier, but it says it's got a three-stage true HEPA filter. And I don't know what H13 stands for, 
or what that means to an air purifier, but I feel like it's the season of air purifiers. We've seen a couple come out uh, from Xiaomi. They have the P2 now. Uh, Wise has theirs in stock. Plus I've got this one. I got uh, the other one that I just showed you. This orange tape though, man. Now this orange tape does keep the box nice, but now I can't show you anything. So here's what you get. Quick start guide, two sided, no less. Some more guides, some more cards, styrofoam. Ooh, okay. More foam. Bag of the plastic and one pretty air purifier. Wow, does that look nice. You know, ladies, if you want to get to my heart, well, brushed silver plastic appliances with smart features, not just food. Now, I will say this looks fantastic. There is nothing I can complain about in terms of looks on this thing. One of the best looking air purifiers I have seen to date. So continuing down the path of what you get, you get to open this. You get to pull out the filter. Look at this filter. Woo! Stab. I gotta make some room here. Let me just let, let me just set this to the side. Now the filter itself is showing some information and what they can handle. Now I really like that they're doing that. It feels a little bit different than other filters I've I've had in air purifiers. It's got this mesh on the outside, which is a little bit loose, actually. Uh, not like super loose, but there's a little give in it so I can kind of move things. And I think that's just the first stage that they're using on this. Now it's got some straps. They want you to keep that on the outside when you put it in the compartment, and then that will make sure you can pull it out. They've got a model number, and they're also telling you where exactly you're gonna head to get replacement filters. The actual internals of the device are quite simple. There's a big hole for a filter. And then there's a, a fan up at the top. So you can see that right there. There's not a lot else. The cable is attached. It's a fairly good length table. There's nothing crazy going on here. You've got a, a very small adapter here, so you're not gonna have any trouble getting this plugged in. And there's really good, just little words all over the, the filter and the filter compartment here. So they're making sure that it's really clear what you need to do with drill. Let's put our filter back in. So they're really giving you some alignment. Uh, they've given you the little tabs at the bottom. So you get those tabs in the appropriate spots. Super simple to click in. Now here's your look at the top before I get this turned on, but let's get it plugged in, working, and see what it sounds and feels like. Turn it on. Oh yeah. Oh, what the, what is, are you, that's a light, that's a light. There's a light on the front. See, that's actually a really nice default that they've done here. So this light comes on, it looks fantastic, but then it goes off after a few seconds and so do the controls on top. They actually turn off. Let me walk you through the different controls on here because they've done some really good things. Number one, there's a power button and then there is a fan speed button. You can cycle through the different fan speeds. And if you want, you can turn on the auto or the sleep mode, which keeps things very quiet. Obviously the lights are gonna turn off. Now the whole interface or the whole LEDs turn off after a few seconds, after you've just turned on the device and then you're not touching the controls, which is a really nice touch here. They also have an info button and the info button allows you to cycle through the filter life, uh, the PM 2.5 micrograms per meter cubed, and then also the uh, level of clean air you have in the room. There's also a timer function, and with a couple of the buttons, you can hold for five seconds in order to do the setup for Wi-Fi or to get it into the app, which has quite a bit of additional controls for you. You know, just in terms of the looks, uh, you know, this looks very plain to me. This is very much like a kid's room type of look and feel, but this is really fantastic looking and I love the way that the whole device lights up if you want it to. Uh, I really like the design over here. It's a little more tilty 
than this is. So I would say this is actually a little safer, but I'll tell you what's really good from a safety perspective here. When this is on, if you're running this and the back compartment opens, they actually have a set of contacts that know that this back compartment has been open. They turn it right off. What's interesting about Drio is that it can be a full set and forget air purifier because it has the PM 2.5 air quality sensor on board. That sensor tracked very well versus some other ones that I have in my home, so I felt good knowing that it was fairly accurate, although it doesn't have all of the measurements you might be after. The air purifier itself is extremely quiet in sleep mode, and even in turbo mode, it doesn't overwhelm me with the noise that it makes. I'm totally impressed with the lighting situation as I can manually turn the light on or off, or I can leave the device to sense the light in the room and turn it on and off as I see fit. The filter life seems long enough, although there is no stated length of time that it will last as it's actually measuring the air throughput and the state of your air to determine its lifespan. Although the voice controls with Google and Amazon are pretty good, you will miss the PM 2.5 sensor from both of those systems. So you won't gain access to that, but you can control by changing modes and by changing fan speeds and some of the features on the device as well. Overall, this is an extremely impressive looking air purifier and I've enjoyed every minute of it. I would like to see the connectivity options expand, but I will be checking out Drio's website for more of their products as they have fans and heaters and other appliances like this with smart features. I'm not wearing the shirt right now, but I always say if you can't sense it, then you can't automate it. And that comes from my time in the oil industry where I was initially an automation or a controls engineer. And what that meant was I used to program PLCs or what is called a programmable logic controller. And then people would come and they would ask me, how do I automate a certain process or get around a certain problem that you know we're dealing with as a company? And invariably, I would have to tell them that because they didn't buy the sensor, they couldn't automate their way out of the problem. I would tell them that they should have spent the money on the sensor originally and now would have to spend much more on the sensor and redoing a bunch of work. People didn't like me that much when I said things like that, but what can you do? So that's one of the big reasons I have, I have always focused on sensors on Automate Your Life and it's also just because I have seen the impact of having three or four sensors versus having one and how much more you can accomplish. So when I show you those kinds of products on the, on the channel, I'm showing you what I truly believe in. And these are some of the most unique and the most useful sensors that I saw this year. So enjoy. Oh, interesting. This is the P1 motion sensor from Akara. It's going to require the Zigbee hub. It's a motion sensor that includes a light sensor on it, which I think is intended to give you some more automation options. Pretty standard stand we got. Oh, that's a bigger stand. Okay. And this feels bigger. This feels beefy. Ooh. Yep. Yeah, that's a lot bigger. Okay, and a bigger manual. Really interesting to see this one. I like the fact that it is a little, a little heftier. It feels a little more stable, actually, in my hands versus the previous motion sensor. There's a little uh, button in the back. I assume that's for pairing and things, but this one's a Zigbee one, so we're not talking about thread just yet. Let's do the Water Leak XS sensor. Now, this is a 700 series Z-Wave product, which is what we should be seeing these days from most Z-Wave makers like Zoos. One day I'll get into this. That's, there's nothing there. <laughs> Look at that thing, you guys. There, there's tiny, tiny pins. Now there's four on there. Uh, it looks like I can open this up. We've got a little coin battery. As soon as I pull that, we're in pairing mode. But the, I mean, the footprint on this thing, that is incredible. I think that's the smallest leak sensor I've ever seen. Uh, and you know, Zoos has got quality all over. The only thing I'll say with this, there's no detection on the top. That might bother some of you, but honestly, really neat. Let's do the open and close sensor from Zoos. Now this is the XS model again. 
these are fairly small based on what I've seen, which is really nice when it comes to a contact sensor, that's what you want. And uh, it's dual sided. So that's a really nice feature. You can see the little gray line there and that means it's dual sided. We can pop it open and get to the battery. Plus uh, they actually gave us something to pop open that compartment with and they gave us some extra, some stickers here for this sensor now. I mean, you don't even need to use much on this. It's such a light device. And there we go, I'm into it. All I gotta do is pull that tab. We're into pairing mode and I do have a proper Z-Wave, uh, what do you call it, DSK, like the, it's gonna properly, securely connect to your smart home hub. Let's do another. Now this is a tilt slash shock sensor. So I'm thinking that this will manage vibration or you just kind of banging on near or around it. So that's actually a really nice type of sensor that we don't get that often. Again, basically, the same device as, as I've had with other XS sensors. We get the sticker, we get the sensor, it's incredibly small. Get in there, it's a CR2032 battery. We've gotta pair this with a hub. And I have the XS temp and humidity sensor here. So four different sensors from Zoos, all part of that XS lineup. Actually, this one is the biggest one I have seen. So we're getting some of our mounting hardware and that little tool for kind of opening up the device. We got our little manual for pairing it. And I'm seeing at the bottom here, that's where it's taking in the temperature and humidity or the air for those measurements in the device. We can pop up, open the compartment. Took me a bit, but I got it open. And there we are. Now this is a bigger battery. Again, I've got the proper code here for connecting that to a hub. Yeah, this is a 2450. So I think this is doing a little more work than those other sensors. It's a bit of a bigger footprint, if you can call any of this a big footprint from zoos. But all of those sensors are incredibly small. I love the fact that we just got these little gray white boxes. They're just a little off white as a box. Incredible stuff. Now, they gave us these waterproof cases. So this doesn't make it like bulletproof for the outdoor environment, but it does make it waterproof. Okay, so I have that off. There's a little bit of mounting hardware in there because we have these little screw holes there. And then you fit these, these in here. Oh man, if I push that in, that ain't coming out ever. I don't know that I want to do that yet because I haven't even taken the battery off. Oh boy. How did you lose your sensor, Brian? Well, I put it in the case. Yeah, that'd be tough to get out of there, but that's what's got to happen for a waterproof seal. So this is a mounting bracket, which would is kind of a useful idea actually for the temperature and the humidity sensor. I just fit it in. The reason being is that's gonna keep those air gaps open. You're not gonna set this against something or kind of mess that up. So that's actually a decent idea. Those are the smallest screws of all time to get that mounted somewhere. What's this one? It's one they didn't tell me anything about. More magnet stickers, you know I'm gonna be happy then. Oh, it's got a little stand to it, you see that? I can't push that in. Feels, I already broke it. <laughs> so I was about to say, feels a little less high quality on this stand here. It's not broken, but it pops out very easy. I can get that back in. Got a little button on the side for, uh, I'm sure, switching between modes. And then inside, how nice of them to pack us a couple of AAA batteries. But let's look at this thing. So I just turned it on. You get to see it before I do. 22 down here. It's too hot today in Alberta. 64%, uh, you can see how humid it is in here. And that's that feels very accurate, actually. I'm gonna compare this to another sensor. So both of those are joining the overall third reality platform. And I really love how inexpensive they are. They're just giving us what we need on smart devices. So really enjoying what I'm seeing coming from this company.
One of the things I never tell you guys is how often it messes up here when I'm trying to film something. And the first time I unboxed this, I had all kinds of issues. My mic wasn't working. Everything was just a mess. So anyways, re-unboxing and uh, boy, everything kind of looks like it's already been unboxed. Now this one I bought, it's called the Homeseer Z-Wave Flex Sensor. I was tuned into this device a long time ago actually by Pete who's been with me here on the channel. We talk all the time and he was trying to do something with, I think it was a dehumidifier in his basement. And what he was doing was he's plugging in this little extra sensor. This is the optional sensor I purchased. And then he's putting that over an LED light on that dehumidifier. What that means is anytime it turns on, he knows and he can run other automation. Of course, with the buzzer and the temperature sensor, you can run other things. There's also a little bit of mounting hardware here and it's powerable either by the USB, which I can't get open on the bottom, or there's three, I think they're AAA batteries. Yep, I'm actually planning a series to show you how you can uh, trigger automations with anything in your home. It's not just these fancy sensors or these fancy devices that we go out and purchase. There are other ways. There is no product category that garners more attention than smart home cameras. And that's because we're visual creatures and smart home cameras provide us that visual that we need in order to feel like our property or our family is safe. But Cameras also garner attention when things go wrong. And when a guy named Paul Moore started poking holes in Yuffie's cameras, we saw a brand go from very trusted to up in the air. And it's a sad thing, actually. And before you go and uh, say it was just somebody trying to track you, or the whole company was set up to screw people, try to remember a time when you were in the room on the ground floor of an initiative or in a company or a team just getting started. Now think about how many of the intentions in the room were insidious by nature, and I'm sure in almost every case that the answer is none. I'm sure you remember it as most people were not trying to do something harmful, and then maybe, just maybe, you can empathize with mistakes being made. And I'm not going to sit here and say that any of the camera companies are selling a product that's perfect from a security and a privacy standpoint. But a lot of these have a lot right. And they are really good products that provide that expected benefit of seeing our homes and recording what's going on around them so that we feel more secure. I found my knife again. Death to air bubbles. All right, let's see. Today we have the EasyViz BC2. Now this is a smart home camera. Uh, I've had lots from EasyViz. They've had lots of great products, uh, but this one is a battery version. I was not ready for this. Are you? <laughs> That's it. I, hey. I miss the sounds of tech. Here's a TP-Link smart plug. Here is the new EasyViz VC2. Now, that's it. And this is a smart home camera. Inside of the box, we also get a stand for the device. Yeah, let's do away with the box. I won't throw it this time, but we've got a few accessories. We've got the manual right here, quick start guide. Looks like some regulatory information. We do have a power cable. It is micro USB from USB, and that's because we have a micro USB port in the back for recharging. It does say it's about a 50 day battery. So this is not a real long time period that you're gonna have with this camera before you gotta recharge it. There is mounting hardware, and that's because we have a metal plate that sticks very well to the bottom of that. So you do have that physical mounting option. And then these just look like a couple of mounting stickers to really affix this if you wanna do it that way. The entire bottom of this camera 
is magnetic. It's not super strong magnetic, but that's enough. Uh, I wonder, is the bottom magnetic? Yeah, the bottom is magnetic too. Now, can I stick it to every side? No, only the bottom, which kind of does make sense. But that's double magnetic, so that means I could go on your fridge, any other metallic surface you have in your home, and you've got the mounting all right here. It does take a micro SD card, and I am seeing both reset and power buttons, plus a speaker on the top. Now, with a camera like this, the EasyViz app, it's very good. I've worked with many of their cameras, so this is gonna be what's expected. The only thing that might catch off guard is that 50-day uh, battery length of time that exists on this device. So the speaker sounded great there. It's full two-way communication. This is a 1080p camera, so it's not 2K, but I, I mean, if you were expecting that on this, I'd be surprised. I, uh, you know, you're gonna have the night vision. You're gonna have everything you expect on this camera. So with EasyViz, I've used their app before. It's very good. They connect to both uh, Google and uh, Amazon Voice Assistant. You can display in their apps, although you don't have a lot of automation options usually with those cameras in Google or Amazon apps. So the only thing left to do here is find out how good it looks. Now I've already opened up this box because I wanted to make sure that what I thought was in here was actually in here. And this is a brand new product debut on Automate Your Life. Now this is a 4K security system from Eufy. Now Eufy has always been pretty good with their cameras, the recognition, and really just how the camera feeds look. But there's some exciting upgrades in here. One of the biggest things that I like about Eufy and their security system is the home base. Now this is a newer home base than the older one that I have. It's a little bit bigger. This is allowing you to store uh, footage from these cameras directly on here and it also manages a lot of uh, the events that are happening in your home. So you can access the, the video feeds here. That means you're not going to have cloud-based costs and obviously with the storage being here, you're not gonna have those cloud-based cost too. Plus, this is sitting somewhere else in your home. You can place it just about anywhere. So these are capturing the footage and it's all secure here within seconds on that hard drive. I've always loved that about what Eufy's doing. It also makes notifications much quicker. I've always experienced that these systems from Eufy can respond much quicker to you. So I'm really excited to see how that performs with the new home base. So we've got two cameras, plus the home base, plus I get to peel a sticker here. Woo! <laughs> okay. Now, here's the one thing they said that this is a little bit different, and they did send me a hard drive, which I promptly dropped getting out of the package, so if I broke it, it's my own fault. But this has its own hard drive slot to expand the storage that's already on board. The other thing I really love about this home base, that's an ethernet port right there. So you know what, you're not tying up your home's Wi-Fi with traffic between everything. Cause these, I believe, and this was the old system, it communicated directly with the home base uh, using its own kind of private network that it made between the components. I'm gonna put my little top in there. Oh, it was kind of a magnet. Uh, that was nice. Then you can also use this as a charging base for the two cameras, although I don't think you're gonna need that. These are the new S330 cameras from Eufy. They have proper mount in the back, but what's really exciting about these, other than the 4K resolution, is there's the solar panel. I don't have a separate solar panel. And the battery, once you get it charged, it should last 365 days. They're saying these are built for cold weather climates and honestly, they feel ready. These are incredibly well sealed. Like there's nothing going on here. You got the little speaker ports at the bottom and at the back where you're next to your mounting gear here, you have your little port for getting to your charge your charger. That's pretty well sealed and it's pretty deep actually. So that's a good sign to me for keeping these 
sealed. Otherwise, there's no buttons except a little sink button here. And really, this is just a very well-designed unit. There's a spotlight on these. You can set up how you want that spotlight to come on. There's also obviously night vision entirely on these things. And at that 4K resolution, plus I just love how this looks here. I don't know if you can tell really well, it just looks fantastic around that lens. I don't know what the blue stuff is, but that's cool looking Yuffie. Couple of mounting components. So, and these feel uh, a little heavier, a little more robust than some of the other camera models I've shown you in the past. On the bottom side, there you go. You're going to have the ability to put a screw through here so you can mount this just about anywhere. And then that comes on and you can screw this down in order to get this really tight on there. We have some manuals, ethernet cable. You gotta love when you get an ethernet cable and all the cables you need. Here's our power supply for the home base itself. Some mounting hardware and there's a little pin in here plus some additional screws. Oh, these are for the hard drive to keep it mounted in the home base. Some additional mounting hardware. You gotta have two packs for two cameras and this is a USB-C cable to USB-A for charging. The one thing I ever found with Eufy that I didn't love was just that some of the integrations, like, you know, you guys know I use SmartThings so heavily. There's not really uh, great integrations with some of the kind of those mid-level hubs for Eufy here. I don't think they need it in a lot of cases and you could do all this detection separately, but some of you might be looking for some of the automation options that doesn't really exist here with Eufy. From a power perspective, this is how hard it is. I can hear it booting up in there. Now I don't have the ethernet cable, so this will be interesting to see if we can do it by Wi-Fi or ethernet. Welcome to Eufy Security. Follow the instructions in the Eufy Security app to set up the system. Home base is unable to connect to the internet. When you have one of the best budget smart home cameras on the market, and you go and you up the price on it, you're gonna have to deal with some people not liking the new offering. So this is the Wise Cam. It's the Pro version, though. I get a little I backed Wise Cam V3 Pro. I get a quick start guide. I get some mounting hardware for the device if I wanna mount it using some screws. And I get a sticker and a metallic plate as well if I wanna mount it that way. I get a USB, and this is a micro USB to USB-A cable here. And they do give you the power brick that's needed for this. This one's 0.35 amps. And of course, you get the camera. Now it does have a bit of a different look versus the Wisecam V3 itself. The speaker on the back looks very similar to me, but this is coming with an embedded spotlight. Now that's something that you have to add on. So if you're gonna add on with a Wisecam V3 already, maybe you just wanna get this one. Obviously the big improvement here is 2K footage. And from what I've seen, a lot of people are saying, oh, it doesn't look that much better. But here we are, we've got two microphones on the front, we've got that spotlight, we've got the same mechanism here for mounting and orienting this in a bunch of different ways. Feels a little stiffer than the original V3. But I think no matter what, you know, a lot of people are probably looking at the footage on the same screen and their screen is probably this big, right? you're not gonna notice much of a difference on a screen like this unless you got eagle eyes. And if you got eagle eyes, you're probably not putting a wide cam up. I really like the different look of this. I like the darker color on the front. I really like the edge look around this, like they did a little bit of detailing around the side. It's an all black front and I think it looks very sharp. To me, the design feels like they've grown up quite a bit as a company. Okay, let's add it in the app. Wisecam V3 Pro, you do have to pick that. It should be flashing red. Why, it is flashing red. Pull the base away. No, you pull the base away. Oh, because I gotta push the setup button. Yes, there is a setup button on the bottom. Ready to connect. Yeah, it is ready to connect. Yeah, that's my, co okay, I gotta scan. QR code scanned, please wait. 
That's pretty fast. I just unlocked a two week trial of Cam Plus. One of the big benefits of this, I think, it's gonna respond quicker to people and other kinds of detection because this is intended to be able to do the detection and the decision making on device. So they call it Edge or AI Edge. A lot of companies will call it that. The other thing is if you put an SD card in this one, think you're gonna be able to stay away from any sort of subscription. I just got a two week trial of uh, Cam Plus, but I don't think you're gonna need that with this one as much as some of the other ones. But the big test for me with this one is whether or not it does better on detection than its predecessor. So the camera's updated, it's ready to go, and I can play with all the features. There is a couple of things on the interface now that are quite different. Like when I go to the camera in my driveway, this is just a V3, um, it's, it's got what I would call the regular interface. But when I go into this Cam Plus, or Cam, what is this thing called? Cam. V3 Pro, I got a lot more going on. It's always dangerous to try the siren, but let's see how it goes. Okay, it's not that loud. That's about this loudness, and I had it turned around for me, but yeah. Now, there's a few other things like this smart focus beta. Wisecam V3 Pro can detect person events for additional AI customization get cam plus now within the smart detection feature there's all kinds of things there and they even have some audio things that they're they have detection for crying meowing and barking but uh even there's a friendly faces option they're saying that requires cam plus protect there is the spotlight control on this so Let's just turn that on. Let's have a look. Ooh, that's pretty good. And the latency here, you know, there's not a lot of latency on this, the interface here. Like it's almost immediate. And you can turn on the spotlight when there's motion or sound detected around the camera. I gotta test this camera out. Do you guys wanna see more of this? Do you wanna see a comparison with any other smart home cameras on the market today? What would you be comparing that versus? No matter what you read online from your standard complainer, the Wisecam Pro's video looks a lot better than the V3. And with the integration of the spotlight and more edge processing, there is an actual upgrade here. Now that my trial of their subscription service has run its course, I can speak to the experience without a subscription. And I think that's the most important aspect. Number one, you can still get person detection, motion, and sound detection done with the Pro. However, the events will come to you only as a thumbnail or a picture. If you place an SD card in the camera, you can get event recordings on that card and you can access them by going to the event on the timeline and then you can manually record the event to your phone. So it's not perfect and the timeline is a little difficult to navigate. So I think Wise should improve this feature overall, but it does work without a subscription. And I think for most people, you're gonna want to put the camera on continuous recording to an SD card and then just go to the event time in order to make sure you capture everything. The smart focus beta feature is as yet entirely useless and the spotlight isn't super bright, but this camera caught recordings of me driving up to the home every time. It caught my neighbors and animals and it caught every event I would have expected it to and it caught it early enough to actually see something. So from an accuracy perspective, the Wisecam Pro is fantastic. As we come to the end of 2022, I'm personally excited for 2023. I'm excited to produce content that I think a lot of people will enjoy, but also find a lot of value in. And I hope that all of you continue to tell me where I have gaps and how I can improve. I don't have any quit in me today, and I hope you don't either, because if we continue to work with this kind of technology in our lives, then I truly believe that we will save massive amounts of time and be able to spend that time better. We can spend that time with our friends and our family and we can spend that time on things that we truly enjoy. And that is the only thing that we can't get more of, time. So I hope you'll continue to join me on this journey to automate our lives. Thank you for a great year, 
and we'll see you in 2023. Remember, as always, don't hate. Automate.